Quasimodo, but marry a pretty girl who has a brain. Brains don't age. They get better with time. And a woman, when you're older, is far more appealing when she has what to say rather than what to shake. So don't be stupid, you guys out there looking for these Kardashian broads. I mean, really, look, they're, they're, all of them together don't have one brain. I mean, they're so crazy, those broads, but they're smart. They made a lot of money, so I give them credit. Anyway, getting back to Chance. Oh, I'm going to sing to him. Chances are, I don't have any chance with Chance. But anyway, he's straight. But that doesn't stop me from flirting. I feel that even straight men are complimented when a gay man tells them they're handsome. Absolutely. You know, we all like the compliments. Of course, it's politically incorrect to tell a woman she's beautiful or she's got great boobs or her legs are fabulous. Unless, of course, you're Eileen Shapiro. Who's in the chat room. Who's in the chat room. And every guy I know that's ever met her keeps saying to me, oh, those fucking tits. Oh, she's got some pair of tits. You know, they're all in love with those boobs. So no matter where Eileen goes, she's got men checking her knockers out. But it doesn't bother her. She's complimented. She makes fun of them and teases people about her gigantic boobs herself. So she's a real woman, a woman that likes a man that appreciates a lady that's got, you know, big jugs. It's okay. But you got to go, you know, years ago, we used to say to women, you're beautiful, you're stunning, you're charming, your hair smells beautiful. I love the way you look. Uh, you know, I'm so happy to be with you. I'm proud to be seen with you. Not anymore. Now they say you're raping them mentally or verbally. What is it called? Verbal abuse? They're calling you the knocker promoter. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I love women with big boobs. I always did as a teenage boy. My friend Mike Greco and I, who grew up together, he, he was crazy about a, an actress called Meg Miles. Meg Miles had a 52 double D. She was the largest chest in Hollywood at the time back in 1957, 58. But she was like a size nine body, a little tiny waist and little hips. And when she put on sweaters, she was in the movie Dragnet, the original movie Dragnet, for those of you that remember it. Well, when she turned around profile, it was like a joke. They I went at, no Dragnet. Dragnet was a TV show with police. Dragnet was also a movie. Okay. In the 1950s, they made a movie about it because it was such a popular TV show. Anyway, Meg Miles was in that movie. Look up Meg Miles, kids, on your thing. So I grew, grew up with playing Happy Time to myself with Meg Miles because she had the knockers that every young boy dreamed about floating in. Russell, being my dearest friend in the world, who was famous for her knockers and only had a 36B, that Jane and I used to laugh about it, uh, that everybody went nuts over her 36B. She thought it was a comedy. Uh, it, it's just part of my life. But I'm not a pig, and I don't touch women, and I don't abuse women. I compliment women. And let me tell you something else. The women that have really natural-born boobs, that were born with gigantic boobs, they don't really like men staring at them. Because they've had it since they <laughs> they love men looking at them. That's why they hang them out. They always got them pushed up, hanging down, swinging out. They love it. So when guys look at those girls and they go, oh, my God, she's built, she's beautiful. Those girls love it because they were born flat chested or little chested. Dave Hughes joined us. He said that Meg lady oh, you're talking pick. about was in the Anderson tapes which is a great oh, film. Of course, Dave Hughes would know who she is. And Eileen Shapiro says, "Keep it, uh, it says, abuse me, Ron. No, really, Eileen. I mean, you have the most beautiful set of knockers. I've seen them almost naked. You know, so well, I, I saw them naked. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, you know, for a woman that's got boobs that big, they're not flabby. They don't hang like old deflated balloons. They're perky like a young girl. They're gigantic, they're like huge watermelons, firm watermelons, not rotten watermelons that have been out in the fields for weeks. <clears throat> She's got the most beautiful boobs. I always told her she should do naked, you know, boob shots because they're so pretty. But of course she won't. But you guys are going to get an idea of how big her boobs are um, because our comic book is coming out. It just got sent. It's getting mailed to us tomorrow. And you're going to see there's a scene in there where her boobs get caught on a fence and it's going to be fun. So uh, My anybody who ordered their comic books and helped uh, with our Indiegogo campaign, your comic books are going to be coming in the next week or two. And anybody who wants to get them, you'll be able to get them from us. We're going to have a website it, it built was soon. An, it was a six foot high chain link fence that Eileen Shapiro, five foot two, decided to climb over. Well, her She's tits falling all of us. So, well, her tits 
fell over defense. She, they were on one side and she was on the other. She was absolutely hanging from her cleavage. Now she's screaming, Ron, help me, help me. Well, I doubled over laughing. I was on the ground. I couldn't move. I almost wet myself. I thought it was, and she's cursing me at you, son. And, oh, the words were terrible, she called me. You know, what the fuck you doing? Get me, help me, I'm hanging here. They hurt there, and I couldn't. The more she did the, the hurting, the more I screamed. Then, of course, I went and I got both hands, and I pushed them up and flipped them over, and she got off the fence. And she says, no help, everybody was too busy laughing. <laughs> we, you know what? If, if, we, if, we, if we had a reality show, and we filmed that, that would have made the number one seven million likes and, and people would have gone berserk just from what I'm telling you. I bet you everybody out there that's heard this story a million times say to themselves, oh, I wish I could have seen that. I mean, it's like a, it's like a cartoon, which it is. It's a joke. She just got she threw them over the fence thinking the rest of her was going to go. Home. <laughs> but the weight was kind of kind of kind of what is it called? Kind of, kind of balanced. <laughs> it was hilarious. We had so much fun, you guys. Oh, We had a good time at that crazy house we went to it was the king's park insane asylum and the, and no, it, i think that was the second one was that the, was that the no, second that, one that, that was, was the, the one we park? went okay. to the king's park insane asylum. if you guys want to see that it's on my uh it's on my instagram tv but we don't have a hanging from the fence unfortunately yeah we do we do no, we don't. Oh, we didn't. We, we didn't video any of that. No, nah, I think we got it when we got her off the fence. Oh, we didn't. Not every, everybody was laughing. The cameraman was laughing. People, but you'll see it in the comic book. <laughs> I mean, everyone, everybody connected with that shoot was hysterical, laying on the floor, doubled over on their knees, crying from laughter. The poor little thing is hanging from the fence. Help me, somebody help me! I'm stuck with my my tits. Actually, I think that is on the video. I, I think wish I want to watch it. You guys watch the video. It's on uh, Dr. Jimmy Star uh, IGTV. You can like look at it. I put the whole video up there, and so you She's can see. She's screaming, it. "My tits are caught on the fence!" Well, when I heard that, I couldn't breathe. It's a couple. Of, it's a couple of pictures back because I think I did it about a week or two ago, but. Anyway, Eileen's a great sport. I love her to death. Just because she's Jimmy's partner doesn't mean I love her. I love her because of that, too. But I loved Eileen. Eileen Shapiro was loved by everyone, no matter who meets her. All the men fall in love with her, and they all want to, you know what, her. That's which... Maybe she does half of them, I think. No. <laughs> she does the young, cute one. <laughs> Eileen's a healthy girl. She's got a very healthy sexual <laughs> appetite. But um, every guy meets her, wants to make it with her. They're all falling in love with her. And if and anybody knows Billy Idol personally, that's her. Now that she's met Adam Ant, that's her next one is Billy Idol. So anybody right. who knows Billy Idol personally, we need to uh, and I give keep, her a hookup. And I keep telling Eileen that... Uh, Ant has a tiny little penis and she goes crazy. She said, no, he doesn't. I always go in concert. I'm in the front row right under his balls. She said, and I look at it and it's not little, it's big. So we also want to give another promo too, because Eileen's book searching for Adam, no yep. waiting, waiting for waiting Adam, for waiting Adam. for Adam what? is coming out uh, at the end of this month. You guys, it'll be out all over the world. It's going to be fabulous. And she's coming on the first week of June to talk about her new book. And we want everybody to go out and buy and, it because it's awesome. And she's a street writer. The difference between a street writer and a, fl a, a flowery writer. She doesn't write bullshit with big words and stupid shit that you don't understand. She writes like she's on the phone with you telling you a story. And it's the best kind of writing because it's real writing. Uh, I understand she's making a film out of this also. Hello, Jim. You on yeah. the show? Are you on the yeah. show still? Yeah. I understand she wants to make a film out of it, a movie. No, not out of the book. Out of another book she wrote. Oh, the other book. And I play, <laughs> guess what my name is in the other book? What's my name? Handsome. Oh, I don't know because we don't have it yet. Adonis. My name is Adonis. Could We're you, working on a TV series. Could you believe 80 years old and my title of my character is Adonis? Could you pee yourself? Adonis of the of the water closet set. Yeah, right. Anyway, you guys, I hope everybody's taking care during the COVID virus. Uh, I heard there's a new show on Netflix called Hollywood that's really good. Ron and I haven't seen it yet, but we're going to start uh, – uh, to watch it because everybody's watching it. That's the talk of the town. So, so uh, anybody who's seen it, nobody's let us know watching what you think. Tiger anymore because it's brutal. No one watched. No, it's still way up there. Shut they? the fuck up. I'm doing an, an anti promotional. Oh, okay. Well, they just why, cast why, Nicholas why Cage to play him. He, he's going to get paid. You like always do that. I dollars. set myself up for a good joke and then you come oh, in wow. and you blow it. 
Oh, well. you, you, you know, you got to learn when you're working with a comic, you got to give him space. So we, when I hit, but the you button, had your 10 minutes already. It's my turn. to talk. Is, <laughs> listen, your turn to talk. People go to the bathroom. No, they, don't. they go get soda out of the refrigerator. They go pee. They go, they call up their friend. And oh, wow. Like, he says it costs money to watch it in, in the UK now. So people stop watching it. What? To watch Tiger. Oh, good. To watch Netflix. I hope in the they UK. charge a million dollars every time you look at it. No, they're, they're charging more for Netflix, and it's too much. Netflix well, here is cheap, Dave. It's like ten dollars a month, so we get to watch it cheap. I, I like our pastel colors too. I know, but I smell. No, you don't. Did you smell me? No. I, I took baby for a ride, my little Audi convertible, and it's like a hundred and one out, and I had the top down because I wanted to get some sun, and I'm perspiring, so I think I have like bo. No. no, you're good. All I good. don't smell. No. Then it must be, must be you that smells. No, I don't smell either. Smell, somebody smells. Sniff, sniff. Whiff, whiff. Whiff to sniff. Okay, so what are we going to talk about, kitties? We're loosening up here in Palm Springs. People are having dinner parties. We're invited all over the place. We may have a dinner party or a patio party very soon. Uh you know, usually only six people are allowed to come and we stay six feet apart. You could wear a mask or not. I mean, I don't wear masks. I wear my space helmet, my, my you know, plastic That's space Eileen's helmet. That's space helmet. Well, <laughs> it, it used to be Eileen's space helmet. Now it's Ron's mask helmet. Oh, B. Claudia just joined us, though, from Germany. What's up, B? Hey, B. B. How are you doing? How, I hope you are well. Everybody, your son, everybody's okay? Hopefully, everybody's good. Good. Full Good. lockdown. David, still a full lockdown here, too, but people are getting kind of like antsy, and, and uh, you're not supposed to congregate with more than like six people at six a time. People. Well, that's better than just two. You're stuck in the house with all the time. God. I mean, I've got so many friends that, it, that's, that are saying, as soon as we're free, I'm seeing an attorney to get rid of the partner. You got to like love it. I think Garrick joined the chat room, too, even though I don't see him, but I saw his name pop up. So I think Garrick Lee, you guys. Oh, Loretta. From, uh, Garrick L Loretta, Lee Style TV. Loretta Christensen. So say, hi to, say hi to, to Garrick, a.k.a. Loretta Christensen. I had and, a long uh, talk with Garrick uh, yesterday. It was a good talk. Oh, was it today? No, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And it was a good talk. He's got a lot of nice ideas that he's doing for the Loretta Christensen show, which is really fabulous. And everybody should watch it. It is demented. It is way out there. The humor is totally Benny Hill, if you remember Benny Hill. I mean, he's got, he does things that just flip me out. I love his show. I sit there and I chuckle like an idiot. Um, just it's very, gig, very gig, funny. I giggle. It, ma it show makes you giggle because it's so silly, but hilariously funny. Um, I love when she sings opera and rolls her eyes. I mean, she's a wreck. Anyway, watch. What is it called, that show? I never know the name. Um, it's called... Garrick Lee's somebody. Something. Garrick Lee Style TV. And too, then, that's too long. He's got to change it. No, that's the, that's the, that's it. Then, no, because that's his show. That's yeah, the, but what the Jimmy Star show with Ron Russell? We're like 30 fucking numbers and letters. I know. It, sh it should only be the Ron Russell show. I keep yeah. telling you that. Anyway, it's... um. Uh, it's we a, don't even know the title. That's how it's so incorrect. He's no, got to do not. something catchy. No, it's Loretta Christensen. Hang on. I'll that's it. He should have Loretta Christensen, The Snatch, or something like that. Anyway, we don't even know that. Garrick, if you're in the chat room, honey, please type in the name of your show. It's a, it's Garrick Lee Style TV. Okay, Garrick Lee Style TV. Nothing to do with Loretta. So how do I know it's Loretta? Because you go to Garrick Lee Ly Style TV to do it. And then every episode with Loretta is different. Is, is called something different. I think it should be Garrick Lee has sex with Loretta Christensen show. And then he'd get a million hits. Because people want to watch Garrick Lee bawling uh, Loretta Christensen. Yeah, right. Well, see, it's here. Garrick Lee Lifestyle TV with Loretta Christensen. Right. There you go. Where you go, anyway, everybody. Anyway, everybody, listen, I don't bullshit anybody. You know, if I hate a show, I talk about it. But, I mean, when I was watching the Christmas show or whatever show it was, and on the background, the back window, a Christmas tree flew by. And then Santa Claus flew by. <laughs> hey. Uh, All kinds of stuff. I was hysterical. Uh, is our guest there? I know our guest? You, you don't talk. He says he's there, so I'm wondering if I sent him the wrong link. Uh, no, I'm here. Oh, I, oh, okay. I don't see you. <laughs> you don't see me. No, I, I see I, you now. I can see you. Oh, now I see you. Here, okay. Take the sunglasses off so we could see your face. <laughs> now these are my glasses. Are you? The, the, you know, somebody there is wearing glasses. I got to wear my glasses. Otherwise, I, everything's foggy. 
<laughs> yeah, I know, but w you don't have to see. We want them. We oh. want people to see how cute you are. Is this called flying blind? Is that what this no, is? Yeah, it, you it, can have glasses on. I can't no, see without mine it's either. Called, it's called selling face. Now, oh. all the, now all the ladies are looking oh, at how so cute weird. you are. Now yes. you can put the glasses back on. There you go. Hold on. So we, you can know, see ladies him. don't make pastas at men that wear glasses. Oh yes, they do. <laughs> oh yeah. You want to you want to tell me about it? Hang on. Yes. I'm introduce it. People don't even know who he is. Let's oh, wait. shut up, you no, big mouth. No, just wait. You know how lucky do you get, babe, with those glasses? I'll get a pair of glasses. Then. <laughs> yeah, he gets. Here, let him in. I'm, ex you. I'm extremely lucky. How's that? There you go. Oh, oh well. Okay. All right, everybody. So now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented Scotty Schwartz. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Ron. Good to see you guys. We have a chat room full of people. Um, just say hi to the chat room. Hi to the chat room. I don't know if I, I, I guess I guess I get to see your live comment. Oh, there they are. All I got to do is hit the button that says live comments. There you there go. go. Now I have to ask you a question. My ask dear, away. My dearest friend of over 50, 40 something years, her name is Perry Winkler, but her maiden name was Pearl Schwartz. She's from Brooklyn. Is she any relationship to you? She was a literary agent in Beverly Hills. Stunning. And well, my family, if she would know Sam Schwartz, that was my grandfather, and he was from Brooklyn, and my father grew up in Brooklyn. So but then I, it, it could be a distant cousin of some kind. I'm not sure. No, you know what? There was a Sam Schwartz, but they called him Saul. Saul Schwartz, but his name was Samala. I remember her saying Samala, darling, when she would talk to her bro brother. Louis was L L Lulu, L Lula, and he was... You know, my 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 grandfather was a window cleaner. Okay. So if she knew if she knew Sam Schwartz, a window cleaner, or someone in the family, whatever, then we would be related. Otherwise, we're just another Schwartz. No, <laughs> no, I have to tell you something. The Schwartz is in Brooklyn. She came from like um oh the, 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 like near Flatbush. That what's that bro the Jewish section of Brooklyn? What was it called? Um Everybody there was Jewish. I think Lainey Kazan came from there. They all came from there. What the fuck was it called? That section of Brooklyn. Not the Hasid anyway. Not the Hasidim section. The other section. <laughs> Let's go. Anyway, hold on. it's so the, Gabi on. the Gabila Kanish section. I'm not sure. You know, could be. Could be could so, be. so hold on, everybody. First, let me tell you. Uh, so, you guys, this is Scott Schwartz. Um, there's three. The three biggest Christmas movies in the world, you guys. We have It's a Wonderful Life, Miracle on 34th Street, and A Christmas Story. A Christmas Story is watched by over 40 million people every year at Christmas time. And he played Flick. Remember, remember uh, the tongue thing, um, <laughs> which is just freaking amazing. So to get a perspective of who, who we're talking to, he's phenomenal. He told me some wonderful stories when I talked to him on the phone a couple weeks ago. He was also in The Toy. Uh, he played with uh, Richard Pryor and Ned Beatty and Jackie Gleason, which was another hilarious, fantastic I love that movie. movie. I love that movie. And uh, he's got some career and some everything. But one of the things that I love so much, and we're going to talk about like all kinds of things, but one of the things I love so much is the fact that he was talking to me and he, he said he went to a performing arts school in New York, right? Well, I went to professional children's school in New York. Yeah, and tell us, yes. tell people who were your other classmates, because like you guys are all like superstars. Tell them who you went. To okay, well, hang with. on. I'm, I want to be polite to the people that are actually uh, commenting here. Dave, uh, Dave Hughes says, "Does my family make spices?" No, my family was a, a family of window cleaners, <laughs> and uh, that was on my dad's side. My mom's side was electricians. So there you go. So we can right. get that no, out of the way. No, no um, doubt. And no. Uh, Michaela, thank you. I'm very handsome. I think you need See, I told you anyway, to take off, take There you go. The um, okay, so you want to know who I went to school with? My my time frame of being in professional children's school in New York was um, uh, 83, 84, 85. Uh, my classmates were Christian Slater, Malcolm Jamal Warner, Ricky Lake, uh, Anthony Michael Hall, and Alon Mitchell Smith from Weird Science. Um, Glenn Scarpelli, Jonathan Silverman, uh, Martha Plimpton, uh, oh, uh, Hunter, Hunter Reno, who was <laughs> Janet Reno. It was her uh, uh, grandniece, I believe. Um, Katya Sassoon, Vidal Sassoon's daughter. Oh, I knew um, Katya yeah, well. Yeah, Ron knew her. <laughs> my, my, my daughter was dear friends with her, and, and then, of course, she committed suicide, which I, was I, the saddest I, thing. I, I dated her. Oh. oh, she's a lovely girl. I like she her was. so much. She was. She was a sweetheart. She was my um, daughter. My daughter uh, Leslie's very close dear friend when we lived in Beverly Hills. Katia. She was Fidal Fidal's daughter. Yes. Lovely girl. Lovely girl. 
What a life. I think it's so cool. Like just the life well, in when general. I, when I went to high school, I went to school with Louis Fingers, Al Capone, Gotti, um, Joey Hunchback. And, <laughs> Did he beg a donut? And, 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 and Pipe, Pipe, Pipe Johnny, Pipe, Pipe Boy Johnny. And, and, <laughs> and Louis left lip. I love it. What, what, did, what did Rickles used to say? Mako Macananzo. Right, two, bullets, right. two bullets to the head. Right, exactly. Either you know, I came from Brooklyn, and you know, I'm half Jewish, so I guess I came from the half Jewish, half Italian side. I don't know, but everybody in Brooklyn to me was a Jew or an Italian. I never knew from anybody else, and I remember my Jewish friends used to say, "You're not Jewish, but you're better to be half than not, dog." <laughs> you know, and then we got along fine, but we didn't know what Irish was. And I know the Jews and the Italians did not like the Irish. And he rags the, on me all the time for being no, Irish. <laughs> because when the Jew, when the Jews came to this country with the Italians, we came in the same time. The Irish were mean to us. They wouldn't give us work, places to live. They used to fight with us. So they were sort of the enemy of the Jews and the Italians. But yeah, I am Italo Hebraic. And I think it's lovely uh, being Italo Hebraic. Because I my father, you know what he invented? And this is the truth. Pizza. Oh, in, in pizza in matzah. My father made pizzas out of matzah dough. Delicious. Ooh. Oh, wow. Fuck. The crust we, was a cracker crust with the delicious sauce on, and a sardine, which I would eat, but they ate. It was called pizza yeah, in like matzah. My yeah. father, and my, my father, father put the ammonia in the water for a bucket. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's close, you know, it's right there. He put ammonia in the water for, oh, yeah, for the windows to clean. It's a window cleaner, absolutely. <laughs> I got it, I got it. Anyway, so go ahead. What are you doing now? Uh, well, I'm doing like the rest of everybody else. Nobody's going anyplace. It is no what I'm no Actually, that's not here. true. You have, a, no. you, have a, you have a show called The Quarantine Bunch with a yes, bunch of Yes, The Quarantine stars. Bunch. Yes. Uh, I got a call from uh, the, the guy, Ryan, that, that, created the show and he's like hey we're gonna do this and i said how are you gonna do anything we can't leave our house and he's like that's how we're gonna do the show oh, wait a minute i have to ask you a question <sighs> i'm so sorry i had a sneeze you did, um, wait, you dated katia mm -hmm. so so then you were living in california no no we went to school together and in new she york went to PCS school. School. she went to professional children's school right. in new york that's together. right she did go to new york with the yeah. mother with, with when vidal and the old lady broke up she went to, that's right she did move to new york okay got it this was, uh, oh God, I want to say my my junior year of high school. So I've been like 84, 85. Yeah. My daughter, uh, they all went to Beverly Hills High and uh, they were all friends from Beverly. They First, they went to the other school, the elementary school here in Beverly Hills, and then they went to Beverly Hills High. So you must know my daughter, Leslie. She I might. Gorgeous blonde with green eyes model. Uh Beautiful. She was friends with Ang no Deirdre was friends with Angie Voigt, who's Angelina Jolie, and Leslie was good friends with Lara Spencer, who was Lara von Sealing. I may have met one of Katya's friends. You know, we hung out at school, went over to her apartment. You know, on on uh, Central Park mm -hmm. West. I yeah. may have met one of her friends back then, but that probably was it because I didn't go to functions or go out to evenings, that kind of thing. No, but we when we moved to New York. We were living on Seventy Fifth and Third. So uh, I remember those days. Yeah, they were fun days. Anyway, she's a lovely girl. Let's move on and let's hear about what you so want to do. You know, what do you want to do? I mean, what are we going to do? I have six movies waiting for me all my fucking life, right? I'm breaking my hump to get in films. Too ethnic, too tall, too dark, too Brooklyn. Can't get in, can't get in. Now I'm 150. And <laughs> <laughs> last week. Last, uh, no, next week. And I made a movie that everybody saw. And now they're all calling me to play the, the killer wise guy, the gangster. So now that I have a career, I'm trapped in the house. So I'm afraid that I'm going to die before I can make these movies. <laughs> nah, you'll be fine. We'll all be fine. We just got to <laughs> have some patience and, you know, not uh, not freak out. You know, just be be, be smart, oh, yeah. be, be smart and don't do stupid shit. And we'll all be fine. So everybody wants to know about your Sylvester Stallone T-shirt that you're wearing. Is it rock? Is it Sylvester Stallone is Rocky? Yeah, this is the or no, this is the Rambo. Oh, Rambo. Okay. Oh, look yeah. how cute. This Did this comes to... from this comes from his site. There's a lot of BS people that put stuff up. This is from SlyStalloneShop.com. I can do PR for him because I if Sly and 
You froze. <laughs> He's a friend of mine. Our friends of mine. So right. oh, slystoneshop.com. Incredible Rocky and Rambo stuff. Just great stuff. And Mine company, actually, it's funny. Wait, hold on. See, I'm wearing the shorts too. If we could really go crazy, you see, and I've got oh, the, the rocket yeah. shorts. <laughs> the rocket shorts, you know. Betty Grable legs. I met Sylvester Stallone, and this is a true story. Barbara Lux was an interior designer, and I was working with her, and our company was Barbara and Ron did it. Now we were doing Dr. Boris's house, whose next daughter, Sylvester Stallone's house, when he lived up in the hills. So we drive up to Boris's house, and there's Sly sitting on the steps in the front of his house with a 22 shooting rats because they dug up the whole back of the property and they hit a bunch of rat nests, and the rats were running all around his house. And there he was, very calmly shooting rats. So that's my memory of Sylvester <laughs> Stallone. But then I did meet him later at a function and his brother. Frank. And I went in his mother. His mother wanted to read my ass at a party. She said, drop your pants, Ron. I said, why? She said, I want to read the, your ass. I said, what do you mean read my ass? She said, I tell fortunes. And Sylvester Stallone and his brother, I forgot what his name was. Frank. Frank, Frankie. They rolled their eyes and Sylvester Stallone said, you don't have to do it. <laughs> I've, done a, I've done a couple of movies with Frank. And he's phenomenal. And, and nice, nice guys. But, but again, because he is Sylvester's brother, he gets that, that aura. But at the same time, he can play 10 different instruments. He sings. He plays casinos. He travels all over the country. I mean, very, very he's talented fabulous. guy. He's and got a, a great and voice. And, and he sang the song from Staying Alive, Far From Over. He did the song. Wait, and he's an excellent son because you have to see how he protects his mother. Loves you know, mama. I, There's no question. Oh, I Loves have, mama. I have seen them at several parties. The old lady I know well. I forgot her name. What was her Jackie. name? Jackie. 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 I knew Jackie. This is years back. And whenever Frank was there, he stood by mama's side and he watched who went over to her. He was like a bodyguard. I watch, I follow Frank on uh, Instagram because he sings all the time. And I like to hear him sing because he's Ice got a great cream. voice. So it's cool. So, all right, let's talk about you a little bit. So, so first of all, a Christmas story. Okay. One of the biggest Christmas films ever in the history of films. Top three Christmas films ever made. 40, pe 40 million people watch you every year. Do you watch it every year when it comes out or are you like over it? <laughs> A few minutes here and there, I kind of flip back and forth. I can't watch the whole thing anymore. Yeah, you know, after five, six hundred times, <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, and and I I I am one of those people. If I love a movie, I can watch it again and again. I can watch Airplane, Blazing Saddles, History of the World, Young Frankenstein, Abbott Costello, Meet Frankenstein, whatever. Because I'm in Christmas Story, and I had to watch it with the parents, the friend parents, the great grandparents, my grandmother's, mm -hmm. all of her friends, and her in her. Uh, uh, apartment building. I mean, I watched it so many times. You go on the road, you do appearances, they're showing the film. Now, I just kind of pick and choose. I know the timing of the film. I know what scene is at what time, and that's when I turn it on, and I watch the Chinese restaurant, and I watch the stuff with Darren McGavin. You know, that that's my favorite stuff. I well, that. I've learned one thing. You know, I have difficulty with lines because of my... I'll be 80 next week, and I have difficulty with lines. So, I've seen my film so many times that now I know my lines because I, I <laughs> now he knows. Don't, don't, know, don't you don't you find that to be that when you watch your film you know your lines better than when you did oh, the I, film? Uh, no, he was young because I knew them when I did it anyway. So oh, yeah, you were young I, too. I, like I could quote my lines. I mean, really, they were great lines. But um. Well, you know, when you get 80 years old, see what you remember. Tell me. I'm not about looking it. forward to that, but thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I hope I make it, okay? Call call me up when you're 80 and let me know how you're doing with lines. Oh, people if, you're st if you're still here, I will call you, Ron. No problem. Sweetheart, I'll be here forever. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. Don't forget, I'm not human. I'm an ancient alien. I came here millions of years ago, and I've been living for a couple of million years. Live long and prosper, brother. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Now, listen, where were you raised? You have like a New York accent. I was raised in a, a, a medium-sized town, Bridgewater, New Jersey, about an hour outside okay, so of your, Jersey. About, outside the city. Yeah. Yeah, I hear Jersey. Jersey, I got it. Jersey. Yeah, Jersey. Yeah. I love the New York I, accent. I, I go never... back. I go back six, seven times a year, and I go back to the places that uh, that I grew up with, the favorite restaurants, Espos and Raritan and Dominic's Pizzeria at the Somerville Circle, and yep. you know, I see my old friends and uh, some what new up? friends. That's what I, I, I love it back there. I mean, I'm I've been out in, on the West Coast for several decades, but 
Nothing like going home and picking up Devil Dogs, Yankee Doodles, Yodels, oh, Ring Dings. Devil Dogs. Oh, my God. I can't believe you oh brought up God. Devil Dogs because he oh. is so freaking out. That was his oh. favorite thing to eat. We lived in oh. Pennsylvania for five years before oh. we moved here. Why and, did you mention And he's Devil just like, dogs. how come we can't get Devil Dogs? And every time he talks oh. to people on the East Coast, he's like, and they're coming out this way. He's like, will you please bring me a box of Devil Dogs? <laughs> oh, my God. Now oh, yeah. you got me erect. Oh, why did you do <laughs> yeah. that? That the devil oh dogs. I, I used oh to come home God. from school from probably oh. third or fourth grade up, you know, till till high school. And it was get home, you go right to the refrigerator, 16 ounce bottle of Pepsi, two devil dogs. And did you eat the devil dog like I did? You lick the cream all around. Lick the cream place? all around. <laughs> and, then and then you, you start <laughs> and then you start making your way. Wait, wait. Did you lick the paper? The no. foil. No, I did. Listen, no. <laughs> there was none of that. There was nothing going to waste in my case. Listen, when I licked the cream around the two halves, my wife was so grateful that I did that as a kid. <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely sure. <laughs> <laughs> so the people the, in the chat room are saying, let's 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 talk about the toy you know a little bit. Hang on. Wait, I want to tell them. I think I love you. You're good. You're my people. You're my buddy. I really. I'm. Love I'm, you. I'm, a, I'm a. Let's see. Uh, Joy of Jelly Rings. No, you're a sweet guy. You're a fun guy. Joy of a guy. Jelly Ring. A Jelly Ring is a Oh, food. I love Jelly Rings. I don't like those. <gasps> the, the ones at the holidays, the Jewish holidays? Orange. The mm-hmm. orange Jelly Rings, Raspberry Jelly Rings. No, 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 no. Rings. Raspberry. He likes raspberry. Oh, my God. The Raspberry okay. Jelly Rings. The Cherry Marshmallows. How, wait. Do you remember? Oh, my. Cherry Marshmallows? No, wait. Do you remember the, um, oh, they came in a cardboard, like a spiked cardboard cream in the middle of a bun. Mar- uh, not Malamar. I love Malamar's. No, not Malamar. He loves Malamar too, but we can get those. Tin wheels? No, it was a cup. It was a paper cup and it was cut like points around. And then it was a, a doughy thing with whipped cream and a cherry. Chalarousse. Yeah, no, no, no. That, uh, we, I pass. Go back, go back to Devil Dogs. Chalarousse. Go back to Devil Dogs. Anyway, for people my age out there, you know what a Chalarousse is. It was delicious. But yes. Give me uh, a container of milk and Malamas and devil dogs, and I will OD on sugar in three hours. Yeah, he loves it, though. And you add the to the milk, you add the foxes you bet? Sometimes I put chocolate in if I really wanted to be a degenerate. But I love also Entenmann's crumb cake. Oh, coffee. absolutely. We don't get that here either. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm an Entenmann fan. I've always uh, yeah. You know who else? Fran Drescher and I, we love Entenmann's. We talked about it. Uh, uh, you, you know, Fran Drescher. Yes. Uh, the, the ultimate Jew broad from Flushing. I love her. She's the best. I yes. Mean, I can, I can say her likes. show, but Saturday Night Fever was much better. Oh, yes. Oh, no. You got to talk to her in person. She came on our show. Guess what? She was in a robe with her hair wet. I and love she, out of the shower. And she looked at the, <laughs> the camera and she said, oh, nobody told me it was film. I thought it was just radio. <laughs> And she sat there, not bothered, unbothered. Oh, hi. I love, I love Fran. I love Actually, it. we yeah. have somebody. Uh, that, what's the other movie that she was in that you like so much? At the drive-in, and she, uh, the first movie she was in. Oh, with the, with the card, card Knights dealer? of Columbus or something, or the car dealership one? No, the I don't know. It's at the drive-in. Cadillac? No, it's later. It's her uh, very first film. You told me it's her first. Film. Oh, her first film was with John Travolta. It was shot in Brooklyn on the lighted stage. It was Saturday Night Fever. No, yeah, where she grabs. Oh, what's the other movie that she's in? Then she either? grabbed Travolta's ass, and okay, it wasn't in the script. We have some guy coming on who's in that film, and I forgot. Anyway, Fran Drescher. It's Knights of something. Oh, Hollywood Nights. Hollywood Nights. Night. Oh, when she's in the car. Tank. We have somebody so, coming on wait, from that. She does Turk. So you came. How come you came so fast, Turk? What's wrong <laughs> with you? I didn't even do anything yet. What kind of movie was this? Oh, a comedy. It's Hollywood. A comedy. Everybody's, everybody's coming so fast. What kind of yeah. movie is no, this? Wait a minute. <laughs> it was with Michelle Pfeiffer. And a whole great cast. I know oh, I'm being playful. Holly, oh, were you in it? You could have been in. <laughs> Yo, yeah. you would have been great. I would have been. You and I both. Did you ever see Hollywood Nights? With, yes. With, oh, I love my daughters and I. That's our favorite film. We sit and watch it. And we laugh every time we see it. So hold on. People in the chat room are saying that they love Fran Drescher. They're also saying that every time the toy comes on, they mm-hmm. like it. So when you were like doing these movies, you were old. Were you old enough to realize like how big these people that you were working with that you're working like with, like Jackie Gleason, yes. like Richard Pryor and Jackie Gleason? I mean, those yeah, are no, like- no. I was, I was, I, I grew up uh, in Jersey, of course, but I was going in Manhattan to a film club every Saturday with my dad. We watched stuff from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and on. 
And it opened up my eyes to Hollywood. And my dad was always watching films. So it was like, I knew Stir Crazy. I knew Bingo Long. I knew, you know, Silver Streak. So I knew Richard Pryor. Great then movie. Lisa Silver and I watched The Honeymooners. And I watched, uh, I was a Smokey and the Bandit junkie. But did you, you know, know that's the only way I could put me it. Me too. I was too. Let me tell you something about Jackie Gleason. He was the biggest anti Semite in the world. Honest and truly, I have that from so many people that knew him. And yet he worked with so many Jewish actors, but he was an anti-Semite. And I think that's such a flaw in his great talent and personality. I if, he, listen, so, if that's accurate, he certainly knew I was Jewish with a name no, like no, Schwartz. No, it's, it's, <laughs> you know no, it's true. He was an But I stayed friends with him after we did the film. You know, we, we developed a bond and a relationship. And I don't think it made a damn bit of difference what uh, religion I was. It's the person you are. He resented the fact that all the Jews were taking over Miami Beach. He want no, he did. I know somebody. I know. That, I know somebody that was lovers with him for a long time. A woman, and she was a dancer, and she was a friend. She's dead now. I forgot. June, what the hell was it? John, June something. Uh, well, it was the June Taylor dancers. Yeah. Well, this. But he was, ended up with Marilyn. He ended up with Marilyn and married Marilyn. Well, there was. Well, anyway, I can't get into it. But there was another thing going on. And, <laughs> And he was very. He was stooping. He was doing the stooping. <laughs> oh, he, the stooping. He, he was. Stooping. That was good. I like that. He was stooping abroad. That was Jewish, you know. So it wasn't anyway. It's a stupid old long. Forget, about, forget it. about it. You shouldn't have even it, brought it, it up. Right. I I don't want to put a floor on Jack because <laughs> he's Gleason's awesome. Name, what a talent. Because he was a very very good comedian. But you know, a lot of people back in that era were anti-Semitic. They didn't quite understand that Jewish people are geniuses and the best people in the world, and they couldn't deal with that. But most of your studio heads were Jewish. Yep. All, all Jewish. Jack Warner. Yep. Jewish. Yep. Yep. You know, name, look uh, about uh, Mankiewicz. Uh, Louis B. Mayer. Jewish. Third generation Mankiewicz on TCM. Uh, yeah. look at Whoopi Goldberg. She was getting nowhere with her real name, which is a beautiful name, like Louise Young or something. And she decided to make it a Jewish name. So she went Whoopi Goldberg. And suddenly all the Jews in Hollywood said, who's this Schwarzer that's got a name of, uh, of, of uh, Goldberg? And they found out who she was and she got work. So yeah. it pays to be Jewish in Hollywood. So hold on. Let's talk about real quick. Uh, so the quarantine bunch, can we actually see that someplace? Yeah, it's up on, uh, I believe it's on YouTube. All right, you so find it. it's the there's, there's eight bunch. There's eight episodes. Four of them are already running. They're only like, you know, eight, 10, 12 minutes, somewhere in there. So it's not like they're half hour, an hour long shows. And uh, I mean, it's a great little cast. Jeremy Miller, Keith Coogan, Judy Norton, uh, myself, um, Dean, Dean McDermott. McDermott, Melissa Disney. <laughs> And Danny yeah. Pentaro, I wrote down. Oh, I know Danny. So Danny, we've actually wait, had, we wait, met wait, Jerry. Danny Pentaro. He's from Dance Fever or some shit. No, 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 no. no, no. Terry, that's Danny Terrio. Danny, Danny Pentaro is from uh, Who's the Boss? Right. I met that. I we met actually, Danny Terrio. We met, yeah, we met Danny Terrio. And we met Jerry Mil Jeremy Miller just a couple weeks ago through Sean Kanan. And um, and then uh, Keith Coogan, he's been on our show uh, too. Also, he's a great guy. I, I, uh, he, he did that movie back in the day where he was in the boarding school with everybody and the fucking people come. I forgot the name. Toy of Soldiers. Yeah. Toy Sword. I love that movie. That's I've You're seen that right. movie like you a thousand times. You do have a good memory. <laughs> I mean, you know, I go to cocktail parties and I walk up to people and I look and I say, hi, how are you? I can't think of your name. And the guy will turn around and say, oh, I'm George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm good. I'm good with the vintage stuff. Because that's okay. what I grew up with, and that's I'm what I love. I'm good with the vintage. I, you know, knew, but I, knew, I have. I knew I've Betty met Dave as well. I've I met cur more current people, and if you put a gun to my head and said, "Who are they?" You might as well pull the trigger. I'm done. I you agree know? with you, and I. And he's that way too. My favorite actress is Clarice. What the hell do you say? It? Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron. Charlize I, Theron. She's great. I, I hate her name. She should be Charlie T T Tara or something. That that name is, is hard for me to pronounce. All the names of the actresses today are terrible. Years Chloe ago, Sevigny. Yeah, that's a hard one. Yeah, years ago. Jo I met her. Betty Davis, Joan Crawford. The names were so simple, you could remember them. Now I go to parties and these young people come up to me and they talk to me. And then I go over to Jimmy and I say, Jimmy, who was that? You don't know who that was. He's a multi-million. <laughs> he's a multi-million dollar performer. He gets ten million a picture. He just did sixteen pictures. I said, "Really? How come I never saw him?" <laughs> oh no! I mean, listen. I mean, I'll tell you a quick. This just quick fun story. I'm at a uh, a barbecue 
with Zach Ward, who played the bully, Scott Farkas. And the yeah, Christmas he's, been, he's been on the show, too. So we were at his at his home, and there's a bunch of people there. And this was, you know, this is a good uh, 18 years ago now. And I was there with my wife at the time. I'm 15 years divorced, but whatever. And there's this little blonde girl. And her and I started chit-chatting. And, you know, she's like, well, you know, what are you doing? I said, oh, you know, I've done some projects with Zach. He and our friend. She said, oh, that's nice. And I said, what do you do? She said, I sing. And I said, well, good luck. I hope, you know, good things for you. And I hope you do very well and whatever. We talked for a few more minutes. She walked away. My wife at the time comes over and whacks me in the back of the head. She goes, you are a moron. <laughs> I said, what did I do? She says, do you know who you were just talking to? I said, no, nice girl. You know, I, I wished her well. She goes, I heard what you said. You wished her well in her singing career. I don't think she needs your luck. It's Avril Lavigne. She just sold six million copies. Of it. Now I have no. I, I love have, it. I have no idea who that is. I do. I'm not going to. Skater gonna, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say the movie star's name, but she's been around for a while. She's a total bitch. She's the meanest actress in Hollywood. Well, now you're never going to say her name. We got oh, that. Wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. Everyone <laughs> hates her. I was talking to her at her party about five or ten minutes later. She turned around, very blase, and she said. Exactly. What was your name again? I said, I guess I, I, I'll do this. If you tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. Well, you think I called her a whore. She <laughs> went She went crazy on me. You are not a gentleman. You are the nastiest man I ever met. I said, why? Because I don't know your name. I said, who are you? Meanwhile, she's an Academy Award winning famous actress who I despise and has made many, many movies with. Um, don't tell you who with because then they'll know who it is. Well, and we're not well, bashing people on well, the show. Exactly. <laughs> Someone, yeah, someone came on our show and told a story about her. Do it the way we would do it. It was, it was the thing with the place with the people. But wait, <laughs> let me give a little, wait, a, a, an actress came on our show and gave a story about this actress I'm talking about for openers. They were in Century City. You know, those staircases in Century City go forever sure. up to the, the food court. And a very old hundred year old woman is so slowly trying to go up the steps in difficulty. Well, this movie star stood behind her and said, Elevators are made for people like you. Could you move? <laughs> okay. That's terrible. I would have smacked her. <laughs> now that's the person I'm talking about. Anyway. So anyway, she was on a set and a young boy was playing her son. And he said, good morning, using her first name. And she went into a fit, ran over to the director and said, you have that young man call me by my last name. He must never, never, never call me by my first name. Now, Gleason, when I was doing the toy with him, even though... I made him laugh and we joked and all those things. The first month on the set, I was not allowed to go to his trailer. I could go to anywhere else I want. I could go to Richard Pryor's trailer, Richard Donner, right. Ray Stark, but not to Gleason's trailer. And about a month in, his assistant came and said, Mr. Gleason would like to talk to you. And I went in his trailer and uh, we were discussing the scenes for the, the later in the day. And I kept Mr. Gleason, Mr. Gleason, because I've always been respectful and that's, he demanded it. He commanded it and he resort and he resort uh, um, deserved, deserved it. it. Okay. Yeah. And he says to me, listen, he goes, you call me pop on the set. You oh, call me weird. dad on this. I would call him dad, call him pop, whatever. Cause that's what he was. He was my dad and my pop in the movie. He's like, you call me those things out there. I don't mind that. He goes, I'll tell you what, you call me Jackie in here, but you can't do it out there. Cause that's a respect thing. That if you do it, everybody will do it, and that's not what I want. But right. you are more than welcome in here when it's just me and you. Right. You can call me Jack. And I that's, said, thanks, Pop. That's that Hollywood protocol shit. When I was 19, I made a movie with Sophia Loren, who didn't speak very good English. Italian was better. I speak fluent Italian. So even though I was an extra, I was able to sneak on the set and sit in George Sanders' chair, which was next to her chair. George wasn't shooting that day. And I'm gabbing with her in Italian, and she's having the best time because she said, your Italian is as bad as my English. And we were having so much fun. Well, one of the big shots came over, and they said, you must not speak to Miss Loren. You must go back to where the extras are. You must never come here again. And she looked at him, and she said, excuse me. He stays. Okay? Just like that. And End of story. I, and, and I did. And she said, and he can come and speak to me whenever he wants. And she called me Rolando, which is my full name. And when I left the picture three days, we did three days shooting, Central Park, Grand Central, and Long Island. The film was that kind of woman. And uh, she kissed me on the cheek and said the most lovely things to me in Italian. And I, I only want to meet her again and see if she remembers. So hang on. because She was lovely. Sophia Loren was a lovely girl. 
So lovely because we've got like seven minutes left, and then somebody else is going to call in, and oh, I want to. We're going to have to bring him back because we didn't get to talk. The good enough. guests. The time goes so fast with the good guests, and when the bombs come on, it seems like three or four hours. I'm here. <laughs> You know, I'm pulling shit out so of So let's do this, though. Like, I want to do talk. some hypotheticals because people like to know more like about you. So right. you've yeah. already worked with like like such a, a plethora of A-list celebrities. But if you could have worked with any male and female actor, either in history, in the past or now, who would you like to work with? And number two, if you could have been in any movie that's ever been made, what movie would you like to be in? Okay, so let's see. Actor, actress? Yes. Um. Wow. Boy. It's it, realistically in, in, in my, it's a tie. And I know that that sounds absolutely wacky and crazy, but it would have, it would have been uh, James Cagney, Al Jolson. Okay. That's, that's one. Al, Al Jolson. I got to know why Al, he's a lousy actor and a singer. Good care. <laughs> oh, I love him. I've been singing the Jolson story and Jolson sings again since I'm five years old. That's because it's a Jewish thing. He's really not a talented anything. I mean, he was not. Now, this is his his thing. Uh, no, that's I know, your no, thing. I know that, but I'm, cu <laughs> I'm curious to know. He just told you. why. I've been watching him since I'm five years old, man. I, 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 those are movies that I love. And I, I'm, I'm, I mean, jazz singer is the first talkie. And you've got, I mean, there's history behind him and with him, you know. And I, and I, don't, I don't think that I could get away with doing blackface other than next to him. Oh, no, but true. I like the James Cagney part. Oh, Cagney was phenomenal. I mean, that's an Angels actor. with Dirty Faces and Yankee Doodle Dandy oh, yeah. are two of my all-time favorite films. And I mean, I mean there's just so many more. Um, how, how, about so Bo, how about Bogart? You'd love to work he, with him. He would be up Bogart. there. Oh, yeah. But again, you said the one, and I said those yeah. are my top two. No, no, um, you're good to go. Oh, God. Uh, Gene Harlow. Uh, uh, Audrey Hepburn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. I mean, that's just, again, that's my preference from. No, that's him. That's that's what he loves. Stuff. I've met so many. Um, so what movie would I have done now? Again, to replace somebody else to think that I could handle those things. You know, I, I know my limitations. It's like, yeah, we all want to be Charlton Heston, the Ten Commandments. But that that's too big for me. I don't think I could have done anywhere near any kind of a job that he did. You know, um, I would probably say I would have loved to have done. uh Igor in Young Frankenstein, Marty Feldman. That's oh, more my wow. speed. That's, That's more great, my speed. Great movie, too. That was yeah. a fab fabulous piece of work he did. Absolutely. You take the blonde and I'll take the brunette. Yeah. Absolutely. I that I could have done. With, you with know. Those fishbowl eyes. I mean, he was brilliant. Oh. brilliant comic. Brilliant. Yeah. But brilliant writing. I mean, Mel Brooks is one of my all time yeah, favorites. Mel I've Brooks gotten a chance to meet him. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Mel Brooks is fabulous. What was the last question? That was that one. No, oh, that was it. I think those those That's were the two it. questions. Those were the questions. Like, who would you want to be with, male and female? What movie would you like to be in? Uh, who's a female celebrity that's current right now? Like, if if you're, somebody was going to fix you up on a blind date, who do you want to go out with? Charlize, are you kidding? <laughs> that's yours. Oh, that's is, mine too. There, I love there Charlize. There is nobody too. else, but she, although Angelina Jolie is a piece of work too, she's fabulous. <laughs> now, I think I think I would take Charlene along with the rest of you, but yeah, I think you know, so um, she's too gorgeous for words. Uh, uh, no, uh, Sh uh Shaney Wool Woolery. Uh, oh, Shailene. Wo Shailene. Yes. Yes. I like great. her too. She's a great actress. I like her. Yes. Yeah, she's extremely wonderful. They got to change their names. So Shailene Woodbury her. or something. She's going to be though. She will be, cause she's already a super A-list, but she will be like the, this generation's like Char uh, Sh Charlize Theron. Now, like for you, this live, generation. you live in LA now? I live right outside of LA. Yeah. All right. Listen. We're all going to go to the Formosa Cafe, which is the in place in Hollywood. I'm going to let you know, and all the movie stars. When we get to go back again. And, yeah, and everybody <laughs> we know is going to go. It's it like three, 400 people. I mean, they, they not it. anymore. Not for a while. Why? They're, they're not going to open it? Well, no, but they're going to have the distancing, and they're going to have, if it's 400, they'll probably allow maybe 120 in for the next year. No, I'm, I'm talking about when we're normal and we can go out and touch each other and get drunk. Oh, I'll see you in 2025 <laughs> then. Okay. No, Jesus Christ. When it's back to normal, no. what the hell is that? Uh, uh, no, I'm starting an invitation list to all the people that I like who I think make a fun party, and we're all going to meet at Cafe Hermosa. And Listen, I'll be there, you know. And, and actually, you know what? Blazing Saddles. I would have loved to have been in Blazing oh, Saddles. Oh, my God. He likes that one, too. Oh, my God. But you're in show business, darling. Get your fucking feet off my stage. I mean, <laughs> Madeline Kahn. I'm on Third Avenue. Phenomenal. 
Wait, I'm on, I live on 75th and 3rd. I go downstairs from my building and I turn the corner and who's coming at me but Madeline Kahn with red hair teased up to the moon. And I had to stop her, which I never do. I said, oh my God, Madeline Kahn. And she went, yes, you're so fucking loaded. She couldn't even walk, stoned out of her bird, twilling all over the place. She was the most enchanting lady in the world. And I said to her, you're far more beautiful uh, in person than you are in film. She said, yes. <laughs> That's all she did was say yes to everything. And then she said, toodaloo. She wanted that with her fingers and she walked away. But what an enchanting girl she was. Very it's pretty in person. I'm just going to have to come over and we'll just shoot the bull and have a no, good time. Really? Absolutely. Now, we'll but, but wait, wait. Madeline Kahn was like four foot nine. I swear. I never knew she was so tiny. Tiniest little thing. Little hands, but beautiful girl. I'm so sorry when Madeline died. She was brilliant in all the Brooks films. Yes, is that I mean, a nine gallon hat or you're just enjoying the show? Right, 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 right. I he you really are though. You're like an old school Wait, though. When she leans against the door and she said, I he's such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. <laughs> Would you like another schnitzing movement? Right. And then when you see the, the horse with the Gucci bags on <laughs> the saddles were in Gucci. <laughs> I said, how about when they were all farting around the fireside? Was that not disgracefully funny? <laughs> you're, you're like, an, I have to say, I had never seen a black and white old Turner Classic movie ever until I met Ron. So no, they're wonderful. So we've been together like a little over nine years. So like I've seen married, everything married. that's that's on there now. But but when I was younger, I didn't have that. I, I didn't have the repertoire of like like film experience and knowledge that you have. So it's, it's kind of like funny cause you're younger than I am to see you're probably one of the only guests we've ever had on who, who like can, can name, you know, all the no, stuff that's from not all true. those films. A lot of young people, not on our show. We haven't had them. I, I can tell you for a fact, well, I interview. All of them. Yeah. Well, I could tell you right now you overlooked one and it's, it's what's a face who I love. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Wait a minute. This, we will. Uh, we're gonna finally, bring finally. Oh, Cece Pennington. Cece Pennington, who's my dear friend, right? I, I forgot her name. She loves classic movies. And also Cece, the other one. Cece Hendricks. Hendricks. Oh, you're going to love Cece Hendricks. Actually, you guys will get along. We're going to have to introduce She's you to her. She's a riot. Okay, so we've got the other guest is in the studio. I just got a message. So anyway. What, everybody, this is Scott Schwartz. He's, uh, what 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 social media do you do? You, I know you're on Facebook. That's it's about it. I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to be 52 next week. I don't, I do a little Instagram. I do a little Thank Twitter, you. but I'm not on there. It's not the years, Booby. It's the mileage. That's right. So, <laughs> so we, we want to, we, we are going to meet when the, when the be safe. We'll do this again soon. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. For Stay being, safe. Thank you. Stay for safe being, and healthy, everybody. Thank you for being a great guest. You were a really good conversational guest, and we like that. Thank you. Bye. Well, have a good All night. right, everybody. That Stay was Scott healthy. Schwartz. He's a very cool guy. You can see him in all what kinds of movies. What a fun interview. He knows all kinds of people. And now our other guest who was in the studio says, she says now he left, but we'll get him to come back, hopefully. Who left? <laughs> the guest. Why do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they think coming on our show is nothing. They should be so lucky. No, that no, it's not it's a big, that. that. You know, we don't let anybody on our show. I know, but it's not that. Well, he should be here if he's a professional. Well, I don't he, go for that. What do you mean? He doesn't know how to do this. this well, too bad he should have learned to don't come on our show. Don't be a idiot. I could be a dick when I want to be a dick be because dick. it's rude. It's not rude. It's rude. We have millions of people out there waiting for a show, and we can't give it to them because this guest is not there. You're talking, right? You and I are talking. They're turning well, they're into the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. They're, they're tired of us talking. I gotta see if they sent a message because I don't know why he's not there. I... Um, no, I don't see it because I don't think that we can call him. He has to call us. So hopefully he'll be calling us. Let's in go the meantime. straight to Chance. We can't. Why? Because Chance comes on later. This is. We'll call Chance. Ask him if he'll come on early. Now, so here's a, here it is, everybody. So the guest that's coming on, because we're doing a huge benefit. It's called Get In. It's Get Out Magazine and Friends for the Alley Forney Center. Uh, it's a streaming variety program to benefit the LGBTQ homeless use uh, affected by COVID-19 in New York City. Um, it, so it's Get Out Magazine, which Eileen and I both write for, and the owner of it, Mike Todd, who's a very, very dear friend of ours and Ron's. Uh, it's his magazine. He's in the hospital, actually, right now. Boy. Um, he has uh, something in his lungs from COVID. Like he had COVID, 
You're kidding. Mike well, had COVID? And he's okay. And he was okay from it. He's got the antibodies for it, but now he has like a spot on his lung or something that they're like treating. Uh, blood clot. Blood clot in his lung. Oh, my God. That they're treating for well, Let's it. all wish him well. Send positive energy. Oh, absolutely. Oh, we have to call Mike. So, so uh, Get Out Magazine has been a leading presence in the LGBTQ <laughs> and entertainment communities during these changing times. They want to do even more to show, show support for the LGBTQ community and keep up the morale. So we have uh, Get Out Magazine presents to provide the community with exclusive entertaining experience and fundraisers. So this is going to be a really cool thing. Um, so basically it's going to be, since everybody has to do stuff streaming, you guys, and everybody sees that you have to do things streaming, it's going to be a streaming concert where people like are going to be like singing, talking. Uh, it's going to be a really cool thing. And here's some of the people that are going to be performing on the show. Um, and, and we know a whole bunch of them, you guys, because they're Jimmy Star Show guests. So Dion Warwick is going to be doing it, along with Allison Argrim, who's an actress. She's from Little House on the Prairie. Um, Tuck and Patty, a really famous jazz duo. Vivian Reed, who's an actress and a singer. Uh, Celia Keenan-Bolger, who's a Tony Award-winning actress for To Kill a Mockingbird. Our very own Soho Johnny. Uh, Mickey Burns from the Mickey Profiles with Mickey Burns. Um, Sue Wong, the, the famous fashion designer. Honey Davenport, who's a really famous uh, drag personality. Lovari. Ian Guerin, who's also been on the Jimmy Star Show as a singer. Christy Kay. Uh, a friend of ours from New York, Tim Moss, is going to be performing. Uh, Ari Gold is going to be performing. Cheyenne Elliott's going to be performing. Uh, Raina, Gianna Isabella, Wanda D. Pretty Poison, which I think we actually had them on our show, too. Um, at one time, some people, somebody from the group Pretty Poison, um, the FMs, which is Matt Namer, he's been on the show twice. Um, Scott Page from Pink Floyd, Wanda D, the singer from KLF, uh, Michelle Birding Brett from uh, Carpenters Remembered, Samantha Cole, Brenda K. Starr, she's been on the show, CC Peniston, she's been on the show, Ooh, Thelma, Th Th Thelma Houston, which is a big star, um, Leon Robinson, which is Leon. Uh, Pia, Zador a beautiful thing, Leon. Uh, Pia Zadora, who's coming on our show next week. Good for Pia. Uh, David Hernandez, who's from American Idol Season 7. Uh, I met him several years ago. And Mary Satrakian, who's a singer and actress and a, a voice coach uh, who was also in Phantom of the Opera. So they Wow, that's some bill. Uh, oh, and Daniel Reichard, who is part of the Midtown Men, who we saw at Palm Desert. Uh, oh. At the event at the zoo thing? I wish we could fly. We would go to this event. We would definitely have gone to this benefit. Well, you don't get to go to it, though, because it's all online. So everybody sees it by watching online. But how do you perform? Huh? The, performance, the performers will be streaming just like this. Like, it's going to be very cool. So then we can watch it. So, you guys, this is going to be taking place on... Uh, Oh, shit. I didn't even write... 8 o'clock. Oh, May 15th. Friday, next Friday night, May 15th at 8 o'clock. Um, on the Get Out Magazine Presents YouTube channel. So it'll be on uh, youtube.com slash presents. That's the YouTube channel. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, I think oh, we're going to have a, a blast. I'm a little upset about Mike. Eileen, do me a favor. When you see Mike, give him a hug for me and tell him he's going to be fine. Yes, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's posting all his stuff on Facebook that happens. He's such a sweet guy. I really like Mike. He, he, loves, he loves it when they come with the painkiller stuff. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> Especially if they're Mexican and 22 and hung. Then he's really happy. <laughs> yeah. no, it's true. I hope he's listening. Mike, I hope you just Mike. heard that. <laughs> and you know what? Mike is going to agree. Mike only likes Hispanic men. He does not like Caucasian men. And he likes an endowed uh, Hispanic man that's very young. Eileen says uh, she just spoke to him. He's good, and that's good. true. What Sen you're saying well, is true. Yeah, but when you see him, I give him a big hug with those big knockers. You'll knock the clot out of his lung. It's going to be so much fun, you guys. It's to raise money again for the uh, Ali Forney Center uh, um, to benefit the homeless youth affected by COVID. Not, not homeless youth, but the LGBTQ homeless youth in New York City affected by COVID-19 uh, via the Ali Forney Center. And so it's a very, very good thing that, that everybody's trying to do. And, um, uh, and, it's, and it's just fun because we know, like, I don't know, probably half the people on the list have been on our show or our friends of ours. Uh, and the other ones are coming on. That's absolutely. Which, by the way, next week we have Pia Zadora coming on. That should be a camp because she was a funny broad. I've never met her, but I've came, I came close to it once in Las Vegas of meeting her, but the crowd was too much around her. Back then she was very famous. This is going back to like 1970. She's got a Golden Globe. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm going back to when I was in Vegas and like I was staying at the Caesar's Palace, the old one, 
about like 1960, 75 or something. And she was performing somewhere. A little thing she was, what I remember. Pierce Doors, a tiny little girl. She's super fabulous. Very though. little, very little with a big, big voice. Big sound from a little girl. I was trying to think who else we have coming on, but I forgot. Oh, Robert Wool. Oh, who's a huge actor oh, also. Like so we have two him. like a list coming on next week. Wow. You guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. Wool is a fabulous actor. What are you kidding? Yes, he's fabulous. He's been around for a while. He's good. He was in that sports show. That was like a comedy. Oh, I like his, I like his work. He's good. But I'm excited now. What's Chance's last name? Spiesbach. Well, oh, yeah. That weird name. We better change it. He should, <laughs> he should change it. Chance. That's why it just goes by Chance TV. <laughs> no, his name, his name should be Chances R. I think that's hilarious. Chances with an S and the word initial R. And this way, when everybody looks at him, they could sing. Chances are. You're going to sing to him, right? I'm, when gonna, he comes I'm on? singing. I'm going to flirt with him. I'm going to make him really get him. I'm going to either turn him gay or turn him away. You gotta like <laughs> One of the it. two. He's either going to run from me or he's going to understand. He is so handsome. You know, everyone has a different idea of what handsome is. And sometimes people come on our show. They're good looking, but they really don't ring bells. This guy has a face on him that is so, he looks like the prince in a fairy tale. Like, you know, in the, the one that kisses the broad that's out cold and she wakes up. What was her name? It's the fairy Sleeping tale. Sleeping Beauty? Yeah, Sleeping Beauty, that chick. <laughs> he looks like Prince Charming. You know, I want him to be my son-in-law. I want to fix him up. Eileen says he's very handsome. Oh, he's gorgeous. Are you kidding? Eileen. Oh, please. and Lovari is in the chat room. Says much love from everyone. See everybody at the event via social media. Lovari is one of the performers, and we've met him many times in many New York. Time. What's up, Lovari? How you hey, doing? Hey, Lovari. What's, how's it swinging, baby? There you go. So I want to just say one more thing on this uh, because it uh, uh, the whole benefit of this whole thing is to benefit the Alley Forney Center, and just so people know what that is, give them a, a good plug. The Alley Forney Center is the nation's largest and most comprehensive agency dedicated to LGBTQ homeless use, assisting nearly 1,800 young people per year through a 24-hour drop-in center, which provides over 65,000 meals annually, medical and mental health services through an on-site clinic, and a scattered site housing program. Uh, the Alley Forney Center's goal is to provide the LGBTQ homeless youth with the support and services they need to escape the streets and begin to live a healthy and independent life. And for more information, you can visit AlleyForneyCenter.org. Uh, 100% of the proceeds from the event are going directly to the Alley Forney Center. And it's A-L-I-F-O-R-N-E-Y Center.org. There you go. Oh, yes, here. Let's bring him in. <laughs> hey, hey, we only going to have a minute or two because we I'm we so sorry. You. Technical difficulties. So. Where, the, where the fuck were you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would flip off Comcast right now, but my, you know, like everybody, my nails <laughs> are manicured, not cut. So, <laughs> so fuck everybody... you, Comcast. <laughs> yeah, but how, how are your toenails? You got talons yet like the rest of us? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No Barry White, um, former wife <laughs> nails guys, going on here. This is Jason, everybody. So don't waste time. Give us your this stuff. This is Jason right? Abrams. We already told everybody who's going to be right. performing and what it is. Just tell us a little bit about the event from your own words. And I love the hat with the orange, by the way. Thank you. That's for the uh, Ali Forney Center. Um, just briefly, I'm producing this benefit with Get Out Magazine. They're one of the leading LGBTQ sources in new york city they they've had a major presence for several years now and, and we were on the, get and, back with me and jimmy and i were on the cover oh yeah we were, we're, we're covered i haven't even gotten a cover i want to cover we, and we had clothes on we weren't you know naked like yeah we're like of one of the them. only people on there that weren't naked <laughs> that's, that's because uh he knows our body <laughs> Mike knows what we look like in bathing suits. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sort of a mess here. Um, so I was said, prepared for you, and then I had technical difficulties. So you're fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So Don't tell everybody, how did you get involved with the whole thing? Because um, you're you like me, or uh, you're 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 the produ you're producing the event. You're also like Eileen and I. You're a publicist. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved. I spearheaded the um, benefit. I didn't come on here to blow my own horn, but it, you know, I was feeling passionately about everything that was happening right now. I'm I'm safely with my mother right now, caregiving for her. So I'm doing all of my entertainment related business, anything I'm involved with remotely, um, so that I'm safely bunkered down with my mother. And um, but while I was safe, I was well aware that the rest of the world 
what the West, you know, the rest of the world um, was enduring with this virus looming on all of us. And, yes, uh, we're getting better. It's getting better. It's going to be over soon, and we're all going to be back to normal because we all think positively. And you exactly got positively. You can't, you know, walla in the Maya, as they say. Um, so what's going on in New York right now? Like, what does it look like? A ghost town? I mean, Times Square, all the places that have millions of people. I've got to be spooky looking. What's your view on that? I've seen a lot of pictures. I'm actually in Massachusetts re working remotely right now. So oh. I'm hiding away. <laughs> I love Massachusetts. It's a beautiful state. We're in Although they were, you know, we were hit very hard here too. Almost. Well, all over the world was. Where are yeah. you in Massachusetts? In Western Massachusetts, okay. where basketball was invented, um, Springfield, yeah. Massachusetts area. Uh, we're fags. That basketball shit doesn't do no, shit for us. But you, should, <laughs> you have to. You have oh, to. Back go to, in the day, didn't they love the shorts? No, <laughs> you have to go to Massachusetts in October, and just go there and have a picnic lunch in the woods with the leaves. It's breathtakingly beautiful. I love I'm it. I'm trying to get positioned here and. So are you doing are you Ready. doing are you, are you presenting then or anything at the show? I'm not going to participate in the show. Um I although I may make an introduction because you know it, it's important that I have a platform for why you know we're doing this right now and and everyone's um, doing a wonderful job conveying you know their you know their heart and their their um position on this. Oh, you got a good crew. I do. I have a wonderful lineup, and um, more are are coming on board every day. As a matter of fact, I was on a phone call with a representative from Mount Sinai Hospital. They're on board with us, um, so it's it's really wonderful to have um, you know a hospital good. on board who's doing who's let's there in the go, front lines. So hang on, let me tell everybody. So let me let me tell everybody when it is again because we got another guest getting yes. ready to call in. I'm so sorry. Yes, thank you. Okay, so That's it's okay. Friday, May 15th. May 15th, you guys, at 8 o'clock. It's going to be on the Get Out Magazine Presents YouTube channel. Um, you're going to see press coming out in social media in the next couple of days all over the place. So you'll see it all over the place. This is a... Uh, uh, Jay, this is Jason Abrams, who's basically the mastermind behind the whole thing. So we want to thank you for what you're doing for the LGBTQ Good work, Jason. community. Good we think it's fabulous, and we're gonna uh, we'll tell people about it again next week on the show. And we want to thank, thank you. you for coming on for this couple of minutes just to say hi. And we already and told everybody stay, all the information. And stay healthy and stay well. All right. Thank perfect. you for representing for me. I Absolutely. We'll, all right. We'll see you in New York for sure. All right. Bye bye. See you bye very guys. soon. Thank you. Uh, right. Bye bye. Bye, Jason. Bye. Hey everybody! So so again, we want everybody to tune into that, and we'll we'll mention it again next week. It'll be a lot of fun. So it, the whole thing will be terrific. And uh, um, I did like that orange and white hat. It matched your glass, honey. What happened? It matched your glass. What happened? His hat. I like that orange and white hat. Matches my glass. What kind of brainwave is that? <laughs> That's his intelligent statement. My cup, my uh, soda cup, ma my soda. Everybody, I'm drinking mango, not mango teenies. I'm just drinking the mango without the vodka. Everybody and everybody loves the idea of the benefit. Uh, yes. Everybody says being supportive. So I think and Get Out Magazine cool. is probably one of the best New York magazines there are for the LGBT people. Absolutely, I love it, and I'm so happy and proud that Jimmy and I were on the cover. They did a beautiful job with a lovely, lovely uh, commentary about us. Eileen says it's going to be great. That's right. Where is Chance? I'm so excited. Girls, uh, put new batteries in your vibrator. And boys, get ready. Cutie Pie is coming on. Oh, listen to you. Ron is so excited about this. Oh, uh, he is so cute. And we have to get Ron on. So Chance has a TV show. Well, you know right? why I love Chance? He wrote on my Facebook page, listen to this for bullshit. He's a good schmurrer. He knows how to schmear back. He wrote, Ron Russell, Tony Curtis lookalike, Tony Curtis holds nothing next to Ron Russell. Ron Russell is far more handsome than Tony Curtis. And I read that and I said, what a load of shit that is. No, it's uh, true. Oh, come on, please. He's being polite because I said how handsome he was. We're going to get you on a show, you guys. He has a TV show, you guys, called Chance TV. Chance Television. His website is chancetelevision.com. Um, and uh, he interviews celebrities like we do, and uh, he's a really, really just a nice, cool guy. Eileen was on the show. I was on the show. We got to set up a time to get Ron on his show, 
I don't and, know if he uh, ever wants me on the show. Oh, no, he'll love it. Make him crazy. You no, know, what I love about him is he's got a good life. He lived in Japan. He's got an interesting life. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting interview. Everybody's going to love in, l listening to it. I'm going to also ask him to, like, you know, lower his pants, stay in his underwear for a while so we can um, get a better idea of who he is and what he is. He's such a pig. <laughs> all the ladies like it and all the gay guys like it. We must satisfy everybody, Jimmy. Diversity. We can't just satisfy the straight people. Oh, no, we're not. We're not just satisfying the straight no, people. No, but if, he, if, if Chance dropped his pants and stood there in his briefs, he certainly would make the gay population happy. we got to satisfy the people. Eileen queens. says, calm down, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Eileen, Eileen, don't tell me you were. He says he was in Hong Kong too, so maybe it wasn't Japan. Maybe it was Hong Kong. Wherever it was, look at Eileen. You were moist when you were talking to him. Who are you kidding? <laughs> I know you, Eileen. He says she says totally like she was humid. You B were, says Ron. You, B says Ron. B, we're so happy to see you in the chat hey, room. Hey, B. Uh, B says Ron is so cool. <laughs> you know, B. If you're a sweet friend of mine, you will definitely. And I'm not bullshitting you. You will definitely send me the recipe for sour broughton. Oh, I want go. real German style sour braten. I know you have to get the meat and saute it for like weeks or something. You got to let it rot and put vinegar in it. Let it in. rot. Well, no, <laughs> let, it, let it cure or something. And you got to put vinegar in it and all kinds of jazz and sauerkraut. I love everybody out there. Did you ever have sour braten? If not, one well, a German restaurant, a good one. And order. English Bach beer, like brown beer, with that sour broughton, you're going to be sailing, baby. I'm hungry. I wish I knew how to make it. I'd make it for you, Jimmy, because you love meat. And that's what sour, what kind of meat is it? I think it's like a brisket or something, isn't it? <clears throat> He's going to tell me all about it. She's going to send me her recipe. Right, B? Because I'm sure you're a good cook. Is Chance coming on? Oh, he's there, but there's no video. I don't oh, see a video there. He's he's. Hey, Chance, are you listening? Come on, we're ready for you. He's a teaser. He's teasing everybody. Something came up, but it wasn't him. I don't know what that was. I wish he'd come up. Uh, he's kind of see, like it says Chance TV, but he's no picture. It says UKM five. I see an eyeball. Is that an eyeball? Hey, Chance, are you there? I hope you're on Google Chrome or Firefox because it doesn't work for on, on any of the other uh, any other things. So if you're not, go log in, t take the link I sent you, and go to Google Chrome or Firefox to get in. And she, B, B, B says she'll uh, get the recipe written down by her mom because her mom has a good one. Yeah, I want a real authentic. I don't want American style. You know, I don't want it cut. I want a real, true German ancient recipe because that's how delicious it is. Keep talking. I gotta, you know, I, gotta... I had sour broughton in Switzerland. I don't know how come I had it in Switzerland. But we, we was on the menu in one of the restaurants we ate in. How come it uh, be how come a sour broughton was in Switzerland? It's German, it's not Swiss. Or maybe it was their version of sour broughton. Because the Swiss re menu is really not that terrific. It's a lot of fish. She says authentic. And Sabine Teresa says, Hi Chancellor. Have a virtual party when Ron cooks the sausage. And Pat Grant joined us from Canada. Hey, Pat. She joined us earlier, but we were talking to somebody, so I couldn't say hello. So, hey, Pat. How you doing? Hi, baby doll. Where is Chance? Oh. Okay, that should work. He says he's on Firefox. It should work, but I don't see a picture. I hear him, though. Chance, are you there? Oh, I'm here. I'm hit, here. Hit the little camera button. Uh, it says stop cam. I mean, um, dark cam. Okay. And it gives you that. That's wonderful. Let me try to mess around a little bit. You know what? Try it. Try um, otherwise. Tr try going through uh, Google Chrome. Do you have Google Chrome? Yes, I do. I will do that. Do it. Come back through Wait, Google Chrome. Uh, how come you? Oh, there he is. Hey, how come you sound like you're in a hallway? Because he is. I, I don't I see. He's too dark. Okay, now I got to do my opening. Hold on. Well, you got to turn your volume down. You're playing us in the background. Right. Here's my little... Now say something. Let's make sure we can hear you. All right. We are testing. One, two, three. It still sounds weird. No, it's, it's okay. Oh, but I hear us in the background. Why do I hear us in the background? Uh, do, you, do you have a headphone you can throw and plug into your computer? <laughs> Hey, everybody, live television. We're getting ready to be on the 
the, the air with Chance Spiesbach, which I don't know if I pronounced that right, so we'll ask him in a minute. And because uh, it says, oh, uh, uh, they say that his speakers are going through his mic, and that's why we hear him. So we'll work that out in a second. Oh, okay. Good, good. Because he sounds like he's in a men's room. He's going to sound like that anyway, though, because he's in a room, open air room. We're different because we have all this equipment. No, but he sounds like he's in a public men's room. <laughs> yeah. It says, hello, Chance. Yes, Ron and I are super handsome. Oh, Jane Doe. is right. in, uh, Angela Joseph's in the chat room, too. I forgot to say hi to oh, Angela. Oh, Angie, baby, put new batteries in your vibrator. Yes. Because Chance is <laughs> um, Okay, here we go. Chance is on. Cause I wear a silly grin the moment you come into view. Chances are you think that I'm in love with you. Isn't that nice? He's I like so you, excited you, about you've it. Never, you've never, like, you've, never like had, you've never had an old degenerate sing to you. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. You'd yeah. be surprised. So how come you're so good looking and you're going to be my son-in-law, I hope, one day? <laughs> Uh, I think there's a very beautiful lady we have to run that by first. Um, I haven't gotten her approval. I don't think we're in India right now. I know, no, I know Ron's like, hey, let's, let's go with the Simon I told, rules. I told my daughter, look at him. She said, yeah, he's cute. He's all right. I said, well, you're going to meet him. She said, okay, whatever. whatever. You know, women today, they don't give a shit. Actually, they're saying, yeah. Ron, uh, first of all, we should introduce him. How do I pronounce your last name? Spiesbach? That's it. Perfect. All right, everybody, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, celebrity television host and super cool, gorgeous guy, according and to handsome. everybody in the chat room, uh, Chance Spiesbach. Hello and welcome to the show. Guys, I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate this. Um, opinions vary. Obviously, Ron's daughter is not as thrilled. But I have to say, I imagine you two during this quarantine must be creating your own Kama Sutra. Yeah, <laughs> phone Kama Sutra. <laughs> what is that? Kama yeah. Sutra, sex. Oh, so is that what sex is? The Kama Sutra? Oh, I got it's it. It's the book of positions. I'm sure you guys have volume two, three, and four already videoed or written. Oh, come on. So we have a. Uh... At, at my age, there's no new tricks, trust me. It's all, all, it's all old bullshit. And, and it's just... like you do a yawn between each act. Like, okay, let's do that yawn. Let's do that yawn. Angela, though, says he's very, very handsome, but Dave Hughes says he doesn't really fancy him. <laughs> That's because Dave Hughes, Dave Hughes is our degenerate star. And Eileen yeah. wrote Ron's Vanilla. <laughs> yeah. Eileen, 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 Eileen. Sometimes Ron can be very chocolate with the right person. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, oh no, that's no, so hold on, hold on. Wait, uh, how come you're so good looking? All your life were you good looking? Well, at first I just would say mom and dad were very kind and um, everything goes to them. But I had awkward periods where literally my mom's friends, one time in a movie theater, I was 12. Now you can imagine the psychological damage. The woman came up and said, oh, my God, I haven't seen your daughter in so long. She's so beautiful. <laughs> and that's me. I had buck teeth, freckles. I was short, skinny, a bowl haircut. I literally held the sign in class when they would do the class picture because I was the smallest, even smaller than the girls. And it was funny. In our old house, my dad had a picture of him at 19, and he was Pumped 6'2", 220, and looked like Harry Grant. No joke. And I used to say, is that going to happen to me? And he said, it will. And then at 20, I said, we're not there yet. Said, no, no, patience, 25. We're getting close, 30. Year after year, and finally I said, maybe it's not going to happen. And, you know, <laughs> it was kind of disappointing. Pretty people get that. When I was very young and a hippie, I had longer than shoulder length hair. And, you know, I have a head of hair. So it was with a big dip. I look like Jennifer Jones in drag. Anyway, I was at a gas station and the guy came over. Attendants used to put gas in your car in those days. And he said, fill her up, ma'am. <laughs> so I turned and I looked and I said, stick your head in the window. He said, why? I said, I want you to look what's between my legs. You won't call me ma'am. And he got all flustered and embarrassed. So I don't, I don't know why. We have a we have we have this fabulous woman. Her name's Teresa Sabin. She lives in Florida. She does all kinds of stuff to help promote us. She's just a wonderful woman. And her big thing on you is he has big hands. 
<laughs> when you put your hands up in the air, she's like, he has big hands. And now everybody in the chat room is well, like talking the, about it. Well, the old the old <laughs> saying, the old saying is big nose, big hose, big feet, okay. big meat. That's what the queens say. All the gay guys. Okay. They know best. They know well, they, best. They, they no. say your thumb. You put your thumb up. You're three times the length of your thumb. Oh my God, Chase. <laughs> Chance, <laughs> chance, ladies, change your vibrators. <laughs> change your vibrators, ladies. So listen up, everybody. So let's do some promos for all chance, kidding you guys. All kidding so you guys, aside. listen. He's got a great show. It's called Chance TV. His website is www.chancetelevision.com. Um, you can follow him on Twitter at Where Is Chance TV. Which, what's your Instagram? Is that also Where Is Chance TV? No, that one I left out with. I got Chance TV for that. Okay. So, so he has, he's Chance TV. TV on Instagram. Where is Chance TV on Twitter? It's chancetelevision.com. Eileen and I were on his show last week, and uh, we had a blast. He's got a really fun show. Um, some of the people that he's interviewed, you guys, just to get you uh, uh, aware. I mean, he's, he's interviewed such superstars. Kevin Spacey, Hugh Jackman, Bailey Madison, Jerry O'Connell, which Ron knows him, uh, Bob Saget, Deepak Chopra, Ice-T, Kim Kardashian, Annette Benning, John Voigt, which Ron knows him, Matt McGorry, who's one I really want to interview because I'm a big fan of How to Get Away with Murder, and he's like one of the stars of that. And, he was uh, on two shows at once. Yeah, Orange is a New Black. Yeah, Orange yes, uh, Car Carmen Electra, who I've gone to tons of parties with, and Adrian Grenier. I know you have a bunch more, but I picked the ones that I thought everybody would like immediately know who they are. And uh, Robbie De Niro. I oh, Robert, yeah. I didn't bring him on on purpose because Ron doesn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ron's not the first guy for me to hear that about. Um, no, I don't like the way he speaks about the president. I may not be in favor of the president of the country at all. That's not, I don't talk politics, but I have a little respect. And when an actor who I like comes on television and says, fuck you, Donald Trump over and over again, I lose respect for that actor because Donald Trump, believe it or not, whether you like it or not, is a human being. And we must treat our human people with humanity. And that's not humanity. I don't believe in any kind of bullying or any kind of name calling. I think it's horrific. Being a gay guy growing up, I had called fudge pack a faggot, queer, Mary, sissy girl, enough of that shit. And words do hurt. You know, so that's what I don't like about De Niro. He could have come on intelligently and said, Mr. Trump, I think you stink as a president. I just like you. I don't like what you're doing. But to say to another human, for one human being to say to another human being, fuck you, that that deserves a punch in the face. <laughs> I agree, though. I actually All right. Agree. So there well, you go. When I pick up the post and I see that you knocked him out down in uh, Soho, I'll be like, I know that guy. Ron. Ron Russell. Double <laughs> R. Now we have to the dangerous left hook. Now after that statement, I guess I'll never come on your show. You never want me. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I, next. you're on the show. You're definitely we're, I, 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 I I don't hold back. I say what I feel because I have a right to. I'll be 80 years old, May 28th, and I've earned the right <sighs> to say what I want to say because I've lived long enough and I've learned enough and I've seen enough. And I know that people sometimes just get a little wacky and out of hand. We've all got to learn self-control. Self-control is the is the secret to success. Now let's get back to your good looks. So you went to China. <laughs> now tell us a little bit about Shut your up. background. I'm asking him. He's my boyfriend. Right. Right? Tell us about your okay. background a little bit. Wait a minute. So you went to China. Why? I don't know if it was China. Oh, shut the fuck up. We'll find out where he went. <laughs> oh my god. Forget whatever you want. Chance, if you, right. really, yeah. if you really cared, you'd let me divorce him and you'd marry me. But listen, <laughs> why did you go to China? Uh, what happened was my father was in finance. I saw the movie Wall Street, and I thought, I can do that. So my father set me up with a very, very small job, $1,000 a month in Hong Kong, and uh, I was an assistant. But I did all the work. It was every day. Uh, I remember they said, they never said chance. It was always Chan. They're like, Chan, you look so nice today. You work so hard. And I'm like, thank you very much. They said, Chan, you can wear jeans on Sunday. And I almost died. I said, what, jeans on Sunday? I'm going to be naked upside down eating hot fudge and ice cream and stuff in my apartment on Sunday. What do you mean? They're like, oh, you're funny. you from Jersey. We work on Sunday, half day, and you wear jeans. I'm like, holy Jesus, I'm in trouble. Um, 
It was an unbelievable experience, met some amazing people. My father said when I first got there, he said, find out who is the other person who has the same job, like the, we gave the job as a favor to another person. And I said, Dad, it's Robert Fentoner Van Vliesingen. And my dad was like, oh my God, they, they started Dutch Boy Paints, Dutch Boy Airlines, Dutch this, Dutch that. They're one of the biggest families in the world. I'm godfather to his firstborn. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. I like that in there. But you know what? I really love the guy. We never did business once. He wanted to go to Russia, right at, go to Moscow, right after Hong Kong. 50 50 split. He put in all, puts in all the money. He has joint venture companies run it, and he has consulting companies help us because we had no idea what we're doing. We're still doing, you know, based arithmetic, like we're, we're Wall Street guys. And I told him I can't, I won't do it. And he was like, wait, no one's ever said no to our family to go into business with us, especially with a 50 50 deal where you're bringing nothing. But I did, and that kind of validated me as his friend. But real quickly, when we're there, he brought another guy, Martin Caranza from Peru. And Martin was there working at ABN Amro, the Dutch bank, where Rob's family had all their money. And when the president of Peru, Fuji Mori, came to solicit some overseas funds, Martin said, come with me. We, we will go watch him, watch him speak. And it was 10,000 at the table. Everybody had machine guns. It was a real big deal. And we're standing in the back. And I thought, well, I'm here. You know, I don't care if I sit. This is, this is impressive. He finishes speaking. Martin grabs me, walks me right into a room. And there is the president of uh, President Fujimori of Peru, and he goes, Martin, my best friend, I love you. Come, please, give me a large hug. His family, I suspect, put him in power because he treated Martin like, you're the most important person I've ever met. Now, this guy went on to rob $8 billion from Peru. You can look that right up. Yeah. <laughs> and we did, we did a press shot with me, Martin, Rob, and the president of Peru. And I'm like this. Just this 22-year-old, terrified, not in the place he's, he's comfortable in, and with them. It was the best picture I ever had. Uh, then we went on to do a lot of other crazy stuff, um, you know, skiing in Verbier and uh, falling down the mountain. These guys can helicopter ski and ski backwards. I can, you know, barely even stand on my feet. Of course, I bought the spider jacket in black with the purple stripes, you know, like what James Bond would wear. And so I became known as the guy who slides down the mountain with the skis and stuff, and I only did that for a couple of days. But yeah, went to Hong Kong, and then my dad's like, I'm well, ready to go to. Did, go did, did the machine guns scare you? At that time, it did. The See, scariest the, thing. The machine guns never scare me because I go to weddings in Brooklyn. And there's a lot of machine guns <laughs> around the room, you know, protecting the dons that are there. So wait, though, so in, I'm in, used to like pushing a machine gun aside and say, "Excuse me, I want to get to my table." In, I, in Hong Kong, though, they work six and a half days a week, <laughs> and, and they're really dedicated. They they don't think about it as um, uh, like being forced to. And one of the things, uh, like a rite of passage, is every every person and a woman will keep clothing in their in their uh, desk drawer. So when you fall asleep at work at four or five in the morning and you wake up, you then go into the bathroom, do the little, you know, prostitute shower, put on your new dress shirt, tie, and go back to your office. And that's the uh, kind of thing like, look, he worked until he got unconscious. That's good. I think it's inefficient. Know. What's your ethnic background? You're not Dutch, are you? I uh, know. I'm uh, Italian, German, and French. Italian. And a little bit Ital no wonder that's why you're gorgeous because you're Italian. I'm Italian too. All Italians are handsome. I love Italians. Oh, yeah. We, we are, we're, yeah, we're wonderful people and we're all very handsome men. That's why all the frustrated old ladies go to Italy to get laid. They look for the young, gorgeous guys and they pay a lot of oh, money. We'll do it. But I figured I'm part French also, so I'm French and Italian. That's good. You're French and Italian. We could make nice children. Uh, who, who'd, who'd give birth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think your daughter's going to volunteer for that insemination. Yeah. I, I, listen, I got my daughter. I said to Leslie, I think nature has bringing you and Chance together. Because I really love him. He's a nice guy. And she doesn't want kids, you know, and you don't want kids. So I figured, no, oh, shit. No. But the two of you, she's, so, she's the blonde that was on Facebook that everybody was dropping dead from. She's gorgeous. And you're gorgeous. Do you know what kind of grandchildren you would have given me? Magnificent, beautiful grandchildren. Anyway, oh, she's not interested. She's not interested in getting married, and she's not interested in having children. Mm -hmm. She's, she's perfect. A, she's an <laughs> no. She's an antique connoisseur. She she knows everything about antiques. She runs the, the most prominent antique uh, world here in Palm Springs, the most famous antique gallery. 
And she's a brilliant girl who's beautiful and sweet. And she cooks and cleans. She's a homebody. And I raised her that way. So she's not a, and her tits are real and they're big. But I mean, she's not. She, she, <laughs> He's covering his face. <laughs> He's talking about his daughter, too. That's hilarious. Well, I'm very yeah. proud of my daughter that her, that I gave her those tits. I mean, those tits came from my family. My daughter's very okay. well endowed. So, you know, it's nice to, to know that all this stuff is real. Eileen says, sorry, Chance. What is it to Eileen? Eileen, you're awesome. Uh, um, I mentioned, you mentioned about lifting Eileen over a fence, and because of her um, balcony, you couldn't get her over the fence. It's yeah, it's in our new comic book chance, that's coming. Chance, I, I have to tell you, I almost peed myself, and I don't pee myself. But I really was going to pee my. I couldn't stop laughing. I couldn't breathe. My face turned red. I was choking. I had palpitations. And she's cursing me out. You mother, you effer, you this, you that. Help, help me off the fence. And I couldn't move. I was petrified. Not petrified, stoned. What is the word? Uh, uh, you were just fun. It was just fun. We just had a good ass chance. Time. If you were there, so, you would have peed. So, what made you decide fun. to become? It, what made you decide to become a celebrity interviewer? Uh, years went by, and I worked in different places. I worked for Credit Suisse in Switzerland. I worked for Avian Ammo in Holland and Zeiss. Uh, then I came back and worked in New York for BCI Capital. And every day, I would swing that briefcase and say, "I hate my life. I'm not one of those people who wants to steal money from pension funds." I'm not this greedy person, and I have there's no passion, zero interest. And um, eventually, I was talking to my dad, and he said, "Listen, things did go well because I, I applied myself. I did everything I could. I didn't waste the time while I was in the offices." And he said, "Look, you're kind of free now. What are you going to do now? If you stop doing finance, and you you can't just read the paper and play golf." He, I said, "Well, I love people." And he said, "Go into Times Square, get a video camera, and just start interviewing." He's like, "I know that will work. You'll 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 like that." And from day one, I went in with a video camera that was so cheap that it didn't have an input jack for the microphone. So the girl who would come with me would hold a wire with the camera, and I'd use a mic that wasn't attached to anything, and we would just fake it. And it was like, you know, 200 whatever versus, you know, 1080 pixels or something. And I would just get people, and I said, what's the fundamental thing with people? Relationships. How you pick up girls, how you pick up guys, the worst way you were seduced, the worst way you had were broken up with, the craziest thing you did sexually. And I would just ask anybody. I once got a couple that was taking their marriage pictures. They literally got married in the park and then came to Times Square for more pictures. And I went right up to them. I didn't care and they actually enjoyed it. So I got this incredible content about relationships. And one time they had these kids on a school trip. They were probably like 14, 15 from Minnesota. And they talked to me about the difference of hand holding. If you hold like this versus this versus, you know, like thumbs or pinkies, that symbolized for them a different level of commitment. So I got all kinds of crazy stuff from the Midwesterner people to people in Brooklyn and, you know, uh, Upper Harlem and whatever about dating and whatever. And um, it went on YouTube. People liked it. And then a lady found me who had a show called On the New York Circuit. And it was public access, but I figured, I don't care. Let me see what this is. I went in. It was a three-camera setup with, like, Oprah TV-style moving cameras green screens, two floors of editing suites. I mean, New York put a lot of tax dollars into the Man <laughs> Neighborhood Network studio. So I said, this is amazing. I can learn how to do a talk show, a real one. We'll do a 30 minute thing. We'll do 26 minutes. We'll pretend there's commercials, do three people, and we're going in and out. And I got lucky because a lot of people wanted to come on and I was pretty sneaky. There was one guy, Darren Campos, brilliant, smart, smart guy. He was in, in charge of True TV at the time, and then he went to Food Network. Oh, uh, True, TV's hu True TV's huge now. And he was in charge of it at the time, and he wrote a book called um, Somebody's Adventure. I forget the name, and I found out about that, that he wrote this book, and I read the book, and I contacted his, his secretary, and I said, he wrote the most amazing book. I want to interview him. Rather than interview him for being you know, a powerful producer in, in television, try to sneak in there and go, this is his passion. So he said, eventually after pursuing for a while, he said, he'll meet you for dinner, just whatever. You better have read the book and understood. So I walk into this fancy place with my copy, with a million notes, highlighted little tabs and, you know, the stick them things and post-its. And he said, uh, did you read the book? I said, read the book. You're, you're about to be interrogated. This is, this is going to be a grill. <laughs> interrogated. I said, this didn't make sense. This person could not have disappeared. This one did this. And he went like, oh, my God, he put his food down, and he loved it. Loved it to the point that when we did the interview, when he did the book launch party at this super private place with all these industry people on 14th Street that I didn't even know about, 
my interview was running on a loop at this party for the book lunch for him. So everybody who was really important in TV saw it. And I got very lucky. So that was good with connection. And then one time I was interviewing Ice T and it's on my reel somewhere. And Ice T said he was eating meatballs. You know Ice T. I know Ice T. I love Ice T and Coco. They gave me my first real interview of people who were known, and then my second and twentieth, and and then I, I was at a, an event with uh, Coco. I'll share the story in a second. And Coco was in a fashion show, and as she walked out, I talked to her before the show, so this wasn't planned. As she walked out, her boob just popped right out. Boob. And, and she just popped right back up and did it, and like just carried it off so gracefully, very beautifully. But I had the footage. And I immediately went and put it on YouTube because I knew her and I, I had met her so many times. I said, she'll dig this. And TMZ called me up and then the, some guy said, oh, we want the footage. And how much is it? How much do you take the footage? Whatever. Next day I saw Coco in New Jersey at some hair salon and I'm like, the boob footage. She's like, was that you? I'm like, that was me. She's like, awesome. But back to the original thing, Ice-T said while he was eating the meatballs at Labo, He's like, yeah, come here real quick. Like, give me a second. Give me a second. He's like, I want to talk to you. Chance is one of the best interviewers out there. I could talk to him all night. He doesn't ask me if I have a stripper pole in my house, like some, you know, effing whatever from TMZ. He does have a stripper pole in his house, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm house. sure he does. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he's got all kinds of stuff. But he went on saying just about that. I knew my stuff. And the way it happened was everybody was interviewing him about like the most common things. And I said to him, whatever happened to body count? And that's when he stopped. He stopped eating. He said, what do you mean? I go body count. He's like, yeah, that was my, my heavy metal punk band. I said, I know what? I love them. I have both. I have two of their albums. There you go. You, you know what? They're all dead, Jimmy. He They're has that song dead. Cop Killer on there that was like a real controversial, but it was a great song if you really listen to it. And uh, right. I, I like love it. That. So wait a second. So okay. So you're you do all these cool interviews. Let's do some. So who's a, a bucket list? Wait, no, uh, who's no, yours? No, 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 let's do a bucket wait, list wait, for wait, everybody. I want to. No, I got it. I do the personality questions. Everybody wants to know about him. Not always his work. Now your father's Italian. He's actually uh, German and Italian, and my mom's okay. pretty much Italian and okay. Irish. So now, how does an Italian father feel that you never gave him a child, a grandchild? You know, my parents were so supportive and so secretive about their own wishes. It never occurred to me until very late that they would have loved to have had a grandchild from me. I just never had the feeling or pressure or hinting at it. And from very on, very early on, I said my parents were married, super happy, met at like 19 and 21, and he was rubbing our feet until the very end and just pure, pure love. I said, I'm never getting married. I can't do it. I can't commit, not because of being loyal, but I like the thing of I can disappear for four days without someone worrying about me. And it's not fair to have someone worry. And when I say disappear, it might be just watch movies in my bedroom, but I don't want the accountability or responsibility to someone else. And I knew that I didn't want kids. I taught kids karate for like three and a half years part time. I have the best videos and pictures and, and I love the kids and they love me, but it went home with someone else. I just had a good time. <laughs> and I, but, I'm like that too. I want them to go home with someone else. I don't want. Yeah, them to well, I, I had two daughters, and I adore them. They're my life. If you know from my Facebook page, uh, my daughter Leslie and Deirdre are the best daughters. They take such good care of me, Daddy. They worry about me. They, they, they adore me. We're very close. Where I move, they move. I moved to Palm Springs. They moved to Palm Springs because they <sighs> said, at Daddy's age, one of us has to be in the same state where he is, just in case. So uh, it pays off if you have good children. Children take up time, all of your time. If you give them all of your time, you will have good children. If you give them little time, you will have children that are in trouble a lot of my hollywood friends and i won't name who but they're well lana turner please lana turner gave cheryl crane her daughter no time at all cheryl's a dear friend of mine and cheryl you know used to sit outside of lana's bedroom door waiting for her to come out of the bedroom and by noon she'd come out all made up and dressed and she'd say good morning cheryl now don't touch mommy mommy doesn't get must don't must mommy and cheryl of course went off the deep end but you have got to give your life to your children. And if you don't mm. want to, it's good that you don't have them. So you're exactly. Smart. So if you feel you don't have that nurturing stuff, better 
you don't have children. I agree. So hold on, I want because I want to like talk business. Uh, I want to mm. know bucket list, and I, for you too, because like we never talk about this on the air with anybody. Uh, we always do bucket list for actors. Who who would they want to work with? But you're an interviewer, so who's your bucket list? Who's like the interview, the ultimate interview for you? And then he's got uh, who's your ultimate interview? Not including people you already interviewed, because that doesn't count. You already interviewed them, and th- and give us a living one and a dead one. And uh, and we'll let you go first, Chance, and then we'll go around to Ron. Well, um, we'll first we'll make an exception with Ron because he's top of the list because he hasn't been interviewed yet, but we have him. So. <laughs> You're so oh full of God. shit. You're, You're so like, full of shit. I love it. Oh my God! Like, you, you, you just turned black. Fate. There's so much shit on your face. Wait, <laughs> not, chance, chance, lie to lie to me. I'm a sucker for a lie. Eileen said hers is Billy Idol. She's in the oh, chat room. Oh, in those jerk. <laughs> Meanwhile, they all have little dicks, Eileen. Go to the guy with a big dick. <laughs> all right, Chance, your turn. After Ron, Chance, who's the big, big co- he- cohesive person that you want to like well, interview? Me? No, me? no, his turn. He gets to answer. Who's it? But he didn't answer yet. I know, so I said he's going to answer. My name is Robert Downey Jr. Oh, really? Good okay. A, good yeah, I'm creative. Story and a half. Uh, tooling around Hollywood looking for drugs with a gun, wearing a hoodie to Iron Man, to be able to play piano, spectacular acting ability, can sing, can dance, and his personality, given what he was born with genetically and also the nurturing of the life he lived, that guy has an engineer in him. What, I mean, about, a, what, done it yet. what about a dead person? Who's somebody who's dead? Frank who you think, oh my God. Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra. okay. Sinatra. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Okay, yeah. Ron, it's your turn. The chairman. Okay. Uh, Angelina Jolie, who is really Angie Voigt, who grew up with my daughter Deirdre. She grew up in my house. I used to make her peanut butter sandwiches as a kid. I watched Angie grow. Uh, I love Angie. Everything on her is real. She is not a nut job. She is not a mean woman. She does not abuse her children. Angie is one of the sweetest, kindest, most good-natured, generous women you'll ever meet in your life. And I'd love to interview Angie so the world knows that everything Brad Pitt said about her in the press basically was a lie. Uh, Angie loves her kids, and she's she's a kind girl. She's a little weird, but she's a kind girl. And who's somebody who's dead who you would oh, like of to course. interview? Oh, of course. Betty Davis, my friend Betty. Well, I've already interviewed Jane Russell, who's my best friend, and I was good friends with Betty Davis for years. And I never interviewed Betty because I was, I was an actor then, not an interviewer. So I regret so hard because Betty... Betty and I, she, we talk pretty, you know, turkey. She would have given me a good uh, interview. Like I would have asked, it, is it true that Howard you said you had the most fabulous tits out of all the women he's felt up? And she would have answered that because in private we talked about that. Howard Hughes adored Betty Davis. Nobody knows that. They had a, t- a tremendous affair. Jane Russell gave me the dirt on that one. I want I want uh, Charlize Theron, but actually my favorite and Ron makes fun of me because he's like, oh no, like she's such a no. not sixteen my, candles. My like favorite person oh, no. on the planet would oh, be Molly. No. Oh god, I want to no. I want to oh. interview oh. I want to oh. I want to oh. interview Bad connection. Bad connection. Molly I Ringwald. I, I want Molly Ringwald. I agree I with Molly Ringwald. Fuck you, Pretty I, in pink. I agree with you, Chance. Doesn't matter. I can Ron, where's everything. the substance? Where's the substance? What it, what <laughs> is in there that she could? Never let loose. What could she say? No, I how, don't even how about, care. How about nobody gives a shit about her? I do. You know, how about if she came on television and started talking? Nobody cares. That's not true. Anybody no. who's a kid of the 80s loves no, no, Molly no. Ringwald. People want to interview Tony Curtis. What nah. did Tony Curtis have yeah. to say? Tony Curtis had plenty to say. He was like me. He was not unfiltered. Tony said, I mean, I knew Tony well. Uh, the Marilyn Monroe story. Actually, in the chat room, they're all saying they agree with me. They would love for me to interview Molly, Molly Ringwald. Ringwald is, she's a huge star, you guys. Yeah, she's, she's on TV like, every she's week. Fucking white bread. That she's a junkie. Who maybe. Cares? No, she's not a junkie. That's the most. <laughs> that's the <laughs> most. TMZ stuff. She's a junkie. No, no she's, she's a, a man. man. She used to be a man. Maybe. It was Mark, Ma- Marty Ringwald. No, but, I know. Man. Molly Ringwald is my number one. Charlize Theron is my number two. And you know and what? Patrick Stewart. I would like to interview Patrick and, Stewart. And Charlize wouldn't be a good interview either because Charlize is a very timid, quiet girl, just like Angelina Jolie, Angie Voigt. If I had her on, she'd be a terrible guest because she's shy. When these people are shy and they don't have a script, they don't know how to function. When they're yes, acting, yes. they're brilliant. I mean, I knew what was his name. Uh, well, oh we my. got two minutes, so you got to hurry. Oh, to play with Glenn Ford. Glenn Ford in person 
drank tremendously, and uttered two words if he was lucky. Yet Glenn Ford, given a script, playing next to Betty Davis was brilliant. So I know a lot of actors who really are dumbbells in person, but on screen they're phenomenal because the words are given them. So you have to be careful as an interviewer to know who's a good talker, like Lauren Bacall. You know, when I did Lauren, uh, I knew her prior to that because I'd been to a hurry co up. couple of parties with her. And I said to her, you know, you're allowed to curse. She said, curse. She said, I don't curse. And I would never curse on the fucking air. What are you, crazy? <laughs> so I knew I loved Lauren Bacall. So, it was instant love. So I just have to do a disclaimer, Molly Ringwald, if you listen to this, like I would like so dying, dying to interview you. And don't worry about these two fucks. <laughs> if they don't like you, fuck them. Do you know? <laughs> don't listen to me. Yeah. So everybody, this is Chance Beesbach. It's his TV show is Chance TV, ChanceTelevision.com. Follow him on Where Is Chance TV. He really does have a phenomenal resume. You guys can see a lot of it on YouTube or on ChanceTelevision.com. Uh, we're going to be working with him on a bunch of cool interviews. He's fabulous. And whether you know it or not, you are now a part of our Rat Pack with everybody. You're in on everything now with Soho, with Big Tits, with Jimmy, with myself. Eileen's Big Tits, by the way. Oh, I am. And you're part, you're part of our crew. So looking Thank forward you. to seeing you in L.A. or New York. It'll be fun. Yeah, when this this thing clears up, we're going to be going to New York. And when we go to New York, then we can And if you come out. to Palm Springs, I'll make you a nice dinner. And I'll invite, and he'll invite and, his and, daughter. And I'll have, my daughter <laughs> I'll have my daughter serve it. All right. Meanwhile, my daughter will kill go, me. If she, my daughter watches this interview. She's going to kill me. <laughs> I think you're a beautiful, sweet person, and I had nothing to do with this. I hope to meet you in a very nice, simple way. Without any there you go. Why would there be pressure? He's you're, talking to Leslie. Oh, Leslie. Yeah, he's oh, talking no. to Leslie. Yeah, no, she's a sweetie. She's not interested in anybody. She lives in her own world. A guy comes. So does he. Yeah, we got to go, you guys. We're out of time. Hey, everybody, that All was right. Chance Beastbox. Thanks for turning in. Chat room, everybody. Pat, Grant, Michaela, Sabine, Marketing, uh, Angela, Eileen, everybody, uh, Anton, everybody who's in the chat room. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next week. We've got great Pia's show. Pia Zadora next week, you guys. Bye, everybody. Two, two great shows. Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much, guys. Thank I'm looking, you, thank looking you, thank forward. You. I'm looking forward to doing your show. Bye. We'll have a nice sleepover, a big sleepover. Okay, great. <laughs> Terrific chance. Take Bye, chance. Thank Stay you. Well. All right, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Au revoir. Bye -bye. Au revoir. It was a lovely two shows. Love. Star, so we're Ron Russell, interviewing the hottest, newest, and truest of today's celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live, and you would be a fool not to divide with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come watch it live on WPCY Radio. Miss some past episodes.